Marijuana activists as they prepare legalization efforts in California, Massachusetts, Maine, and other states in 2016. Drug War supporter Kevin Sabat called the vote a bit of a wake-up call and pointed to the results in Florida as well as votes in five Colorado cities banning marijuana dispensaries and said, I think we've slowed the legal marijuana freight train. The measures were among many that appeared on ballots, with voters approving ones to raise the minimum wage in four states, passing expanded background checks in Washington state, and rejecting abortion-related measures in two states. In California, drug war opponents welcomed a vote that reduced penalties from felonies to misdemeanors on possession of small amounts of drugs, including cocaine and heroin. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long-term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800-874-9760. Reuters reports the U.S. delegation to the United Nations informed members of the Security Council on Tuesday that it will circulate a draft resolution establishing an international sanctions regime for conflict-torn South Sudan. An official speaking on the condition of anonymity said, The resolution will establish a mechanism for targeting individuals undermining South Sudan's political stability and abusing human rights. We believe targeted measures are appropriate at this time to support efforts to establish a peace agreement and cessation of hostilities. He did not say when the draft would be circulated to the 15-nation council and put to a vote. Australian UN Ambassador Gary Quinlan, president of the Security Council this month, also declined to comment on the likely timing of any sanctions move, but he told reporters his country and several other council members supported the idea of making an arms embargo part of any South Sudan sanctions regime. South Sudan President Salva Kiir and rebel leader Rayak Makar must continue to engage in peace talks. The official said that establishing a UN sanctions regime would demonstrate the world's resolve in bringing an end to the civil war. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. The FAA has issued a reminder that any plane can crash and kill you. Deputy FAA Administrator Serena Grant. This year there will be more flights than ever. Any one of them could blow up in the middle of the sky without warning. That's why we're asking all Americans to tell their families that they love them before taking off. The agency also released a list of important questions to ask yourself or your seatmate during your flight, including should the wing be doing that? What is that whirring noise? And do all planes shake this much? They're reminding passengers that even the smallest amount of turbulence could mean you're headed toward a sudden explosive death. While hurtling through the sky at unimaginable speeds in a steel coffin can feel like gambling with your life, the FAA says there are ways to regain the illusion of control. If you're worried about crashing, why not switch your flight at the last second? It might just save your life or kill you depending on which plane crashes. And for those who aren't flying this holiday, the FAA has reminded everyone that a plane could fall out of the sky right on top of you at any moment. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You can take control of the airwaves. Dial in toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Joining you in the studio tonight, you have Ian. And Rich Ball. And uh, we are doing our uh, post-election edition of Free Talk Live here tonight. Uh, of course, last night the show inevitably included a discussion about whether or not people should even bother to vote, uh, with Johnny Ray taking the anti-voting side. Uh, Rich Paul, you're not necessarily against voting, right? Um, I'm not against voting, especially in New Hampshire. In New Hampshire, everything is strategically different. But... I'm not opposed to voting, but I would not make it my only activism. I would not vote instead of working for anarchy. I vote to try and keep the man off our backs while we're working for anarchy. Yeah, I think that uh, liberty activists should do you know whatever it is that feels right to them. And I can understand mm -hmm. why somebody is opposed to voting. I can understand sort of the moral argument for it. I don't necessarily agree with it. Mm -hmm. um, and I also agree that voting isn't really activism. It's like the bare, bare minimum that anybody could do 
to mm. try to affect change. And I think that you have to go above and beyond that and, uh, you know, do do more than than just vote. Yeah, I wouldn't say that voting uh, is activism, but I would say that running for office is activism. Absolutely. And that's one of the other reasons that I vote is because even people who didn't necessarily think the 420 rally was the best way to legalize marijuana came out to my rally and supported my activism because I'd gone to the work to put it together. So I feel the same way about a political candidate that, you know, they're, they're doing what they're it. doing and I should support their activism even if it's not my, uh, you know, my chosen way. Absolutely. Although I've heard rumor you might be running for political office soon. Uh, well, it could definitely happen. Uh, <laughs> it depends on whether my suspended sentences would... Uh, keep me off the ballot i don't believe they would because they never stopped me when i was uh running for political office on suspended sentence and i imagine they would have done everything they could to stop me i would so. think well in that case yeah i'm gonna take this opportunity to announce my candidacy for <laughs> something um <laughs> whatever is next and i can tell you that uh at least here in Keene, new hampshire we've got uh, city council in new hampshire there's it seems like there's always an election happening uh every two years Every state house uh, seat gets turned over or has uh -huh. the opportunity of being turned over. The governor, the state senators, it's all every two years in New Hampshire. Some states it's, you know, four years. Mm -hmm. uh, but here it's two years, so that's always happening. And then in the Keene area where we live, the odd years that mm -hmm. aren't those every two years are city elections. <laughs> so it's every single year there's an election going on here. Did you hear the uh, New Hampshire state house become the subject of a joke on the, uh, I think, the Daily Show? No, what now? Uh, well, basically, he said, you know, it only took 300 people for uh, Leonidas to uh, King Leonidas to ha to hold off the Persians uh, at Thermopylae. <laughs> so why does New Hampshire need 400 and some odd people to pass a law? <laughs> Toll-free number tonight if you want to comment. We've got the list of the ballot measures. Uh, Rich is a big fan of marijuana decriminalization and legalization. I'm sure you've already heard. And marijuana heard... in general. Yeah, I'm sure you've already <laughs> heard the good news about Alaska, Oregon, and the semi-good news about Washington, D.C. We'll give you the latest on that, what happened yesterday across the country. And if you've got something you want to share, you're welcome to join us here. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Let's go to William in Dallas, Texas. You're on Free Talk Live. William. Hey, I hope all's well. Hi, William. You're on the air. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, yeah, I went ahead and uh, voted uh, yesterday and it was a very smooth process and all that good stuff. But I'll tell you what, I mean, it's it's very frustrating for me because uh, we're definitely, definitely, everybody, nobody will deny that we're voting for the lesser of two evils. And, and that's really a sad state for this country to be in. Mm. And it's frustrating for me because people say, oh, you know, you don't have the right to gripe if you don't uh, uh, vote. So I kind of tell you my voting history a little bit. I've voted for two president, presidents who got both got elected. I got screwed over. I'm, I'm refraining from using the F word. Okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you'd kick me off anyway. And then I also, uh, you know, I voted for people that I knew wouldn't win, like Ron Paul and stuff like that. I got screwed over, <laughs> you know, and uh, but I haven't voted. Then I got screwed over. So I, I get really annoyed and frustrated when people say, oh, if you don't vote, you don't have the right to complain. It's kind of like somebody says, oh, do you want to be beat, beat with a whip or do you want to be beat with a belt? Yeah, you know? it's a ridiculous statement, the idea that you know you can't complain if you don't vote. I mean, if you are choosing between two terrible options, I don't blame anybody for not making a choice. And, uh, you know, there's some races where I will refuse to vote for the candidates that are being uh, proposed by the Republicans and Democrats and, you know, I'll write somebody in, uh, for instance, mm -hmm. or just leave it blank and entirely. I, yeah, I voted for Gary Johnson that. last year. So. Go ahead, William. Yeah, and I've done, uh, yeah, and I've done that too. I, I think I'd, uh, I, I, know, I know I've written names in and I, I, I want to say I voted for Gary Johnson, but anyway, the whole point is that it's just a very uh, disempowering uh action really I yeah mean, i bet it can feel that it way really, especially when you're living in a place like texas 
uh, you know, where there's just no chance for freedom to uh, to arise anytime in the foreseeable future. But you know, it's a it's an interesting sensation, William, to contrast what you experienced. Uh, with what mm. we were experiencing last night, seeing the results coming in, where here in New Hampshire, and thank you for the call tonight, William. Uh, here in New Hampshire, mm. y- you can actually see people you know winning election. I mean, where else does that happen? I mean, where we're looking down the list of people who are winning, and you know the results last night, and you can you can't count on two hands. There there were at least fifteen Free State Project participants who won last night, according to the list created by the people who hate the Free State Project. Yeah, you can crown them on three hands, but still, yeah. that's pretty that's pretty impressive. And, you know, I wasn't watching the election results uh, come in, but I was so pleased this morning. And the most important thing to me is it's more than last time. I think last time we had 12. So... You know, it's it was actually moving in the right direction. No doubt. It was actually 12 in 2010. It went to 11. It actually went down a little bit in 2012. Oh, really? And now it is up to at least 15. Some are saying 20. But Mm -hmm. the people who are saying 20 won't reveal who the other five names are. So I don't feel comfortable saying 20. So I'm going to say at least 15. Okay, yeah, let's say at least 15. I would be surprised if there weren't a few stealth candidates out there, Mm -hmm. but... uh, You let them do their thing. (laughs) So this was big news. We're going to continue. We'll talk more of the detail on what that uh, what has happened here in New Hampshire and what that means for the future of freedom in not just New Hampshire, but the rest of the country. We can talk about that coming up here in moments. We've got Kim first, though, in Orlando. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Kim. Hey, how are you? Hi, Kim. What's on your mind Uh, tonight? Oh, goodness. I'm calling to talk about Florida. Oh, poor Florida. (laughs) Our, uh, I'm in charge of the Amendment 2 for medical marijuana down here, the Yes on 2 campaign. Oh, and wow. You're in charge got... of it. Yeah. That seems like a um, big, big campaign to be in charge of. Now, Kim, uh, before you get into what you're calking about, I, I've got some questions since you're in charge of that campaign. First of all, our listeners, in case they don't know, uh, in case they haven't heard, one of the big results today of the ballot measures is that Florida, despite getting 58% to vote for medical marijuana via ballot measure did not pass said ballot measure because 60 percent was required as i understand it and you're actually on the show kim tonight Mm -hmm. here with two former uh people who lived in florida uh, myself and rich paul i spent uh, most of my life down there up until age 26 when i moved to new hampshire as part of the free state project so it's a bummer to see that happen how many uh, signatures did you have to get to even get this thing on the ballot in the first place Yes, yeah, six hundred and eighty-seven thousand signatures. Oh, well, actually, be- my gosh, six hundred and eighty-seven thousand. Now I know More what it's like. Now, are, yeah, I know yeah, what it's like ballot, to do petitioning, ballot. and uh, it is something where if you can't do it yourself, you've got to pay somebody a buck per signature. So you must have had some serious money behind this campaign. If you can hang on, Kim, we'll bring it back, and we can talk about your experience there. And are you going to try it again? Because they only needed 2 more percent, and they would have gotten the uh, medical marijuana through. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. What was your experience? It's Free Talk Live. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust, who will never betray you, or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. Again, the Congressional Budget Office sounds the alarm, this time warns of Greek-style U.S. debt crises. You heard me right. The GAO is drawing a parallel between the U.S. economy, its debt, and the current Greek economic meltdown. 
With the debt-to-GDP chart climbing into unfamiliar territory, the growing budget deficit will rise to unsupportable levels. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. The Federal Debt and Risk of Financial Crises document the CBO has published is a must-read for every American. Covering the risk of continued deficit spending coupled with an aging population and the rising interest rates spell economic disaster. It's imperative that you get a copy of this document and study it for yourself. Call me today at 800-686-2237 and I'll send you a free copy. Again, call 800-686-2237 and ask for your copy of the CBO document. Once again, you need to read this government report. Call 800-686-2237. It's the Onion Radio News. A spokeswoman gives birth to a spokeschild. This is Doyle Redland reporting. Tacoma spokeswoman Tammy Barker became the proud mother of a bouncing baby spokeschild last night. According to spokespeople, Barker, a spokeswoman for a Tacoma-based pharmaceutical firm, the birthing process was a major success. Peter Wahlberg, spokesman for Tammy's husband, Phil, had this to say. At 9.17 p.m. last night, an eight-and-a-half-month-old spokes fetus was delivered alive and through the miracle of birth became a seven-pound, six-ounce spokes child. Spokes father and spokes mother are doing fine. Spokeswoman Barker is expected to be released from St. Robert's Hospital tomorrow. The spokeschild will remain in the hospital's media care unit for several weeks of training. Doyle Redland for The Onion Radio News, online at theonion.com. This is The Onion News Network. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the Internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Every day you make investment decisions. When you do business with and hold U.S. dollars, you make an investment in the soundness of the moral philosophy and the potential longevity of the United States hegemony. People who claim a monopoly on violence around the world. If this is the investment that you want to make, please keep listening to LRN.FM. If not, stop using their currency. Use bitcoins. Get educated. We use coins.com. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. Talk live, dial in toll free to bring up whatever's on your mind. The number's 855 450 free. Maybe you want to comment on the election that took place yesterday nationwide. There were all manner of different ballot measures, uh, and there are some of them uh, that we'll focus on here in a little bit. In fact, we actually have the organizer of the Florida Amendment Number 2, or Ballot Measure 2, or whatever it was called, the, the one that was supposed to legalize medical cannabis. Now, Rich Paul, you're originally from Florida, or at least you spent quite a bit of time down there. Um, Most of my adult life. Did you have any prediction in advance on this Florida vote with the medical? I didn't. I wasn't really uh, keeping up with it. Um, I was uh, incarcerated until about two weeks ago, and yeah. I... Uh, I've been attending to other needs since I got out. Sure. So I, Had you even heard about it since you got out? That um, gonna happen? I knew that there was one happening, but I didn't really know the details of it. So we're um, going gonna to get back to uh, the lady on the line here. She is the head of organizing behind the, you know, the, the movement, which was fairly large to make this happen. There was a lot of people talking. Uh, an old friend of mine said he was talking with people at work, and uh, he was really disappointed with how— Many people just really didn't understand this issue. He said that people were saying they were going to vote against the medical cannabis uh, provision because they were worried that kids were going to get their hands on cannabis. Kim, Kim, I imagine you're calling from Orlando tonight. I imagine you encountered some pretty ridiculous objections to this uh, as you were trying to convince people, too. What was your experience uh, in the streets? Uh, Well, in the streets, 
that's the, the most disheartening thing is in the streets, most of the people were in agreement and said, yes, we're going to vote. And, mm-hmm. you know, we were getting thumbs up all the time. And it just I'm still stunned. I still can't believe it. But regardless, um, you know, so Sheldon Adelson, this huge billionaire, he's like the eighth wealthiest person in the world, decided that he was going to fight us. And he just kept throwing millions and millions and millions of dollars at advertising. Wow. Did you consider reaching were... out to the Koch brothers uh, for on your <laughs> side? Um, I am sure that they were reached out to. Yes, I, we reached out to everybody. Okay, because um, I know they're on the right side of the medical marijuana thing. And, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, so anyhow. Um, so so were, there, were there any sort really, of exit polls that gave you an idea of who voted in what way? Because I imagine it was elderly folks who voted uh, overwhelmingly against this. Yes, mm. right, right. The 65 and over are the ones that we lost um, the biggest percentage of. Um, Do you know what yeah, the uh, yeah. spread was at 55 and up? I do not know. Okay. How did you get the information know, that it was the older folks who were voting against you? How did, how did you come across that? Uh, well, you, you, I mean, yeah, this is a huge campaign, and we have lots of <laughs> professionals and staff, so people just shoot me the facts. I get emails all the day telling me what's going on. So um, I'm not sure where the fat came from, from my fat getter. <laughs> mm, I see, yeah. I see. So Were I'm you running imagine... opinion polls? Pardon me? Were you running opinion polls before the election? Oh, yeah. Oh, there's, yes, yes, yes. We've and did they match polling. the results you actually got? Um, the, no, the last, well, the last poll we did showed 62% approval. So no, it did not match. Now this is a huge, okay. uh, cause you got 58% when it all was said and done. This was a huge effort. You mentioned that you had to get 600 and, or that you collected 687,000. What was the requirement? Was that the requirement 687,000 or was the requirement like 400,000 and yeah. you collected that many? No, 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 no. The requirement was 687,000. We collected close to a million and a half. A million and a half. Wow. And how many did they disqualify? Um, I don't know. It was about a 25% disqualification. So, yeah. I mean, this is no small matter to get this level of petitioning taken care of. I imagine you had quite the team of paid professional petitioners. This must have cost at least $1.5 million from what I understand. I mean, what? Uh, how much it, money did it take it to put this on? It ended up costing about $4 million to get it on the ballot. $4 million. How does one go about beginning the process of raising $4 million? I mean, I wouldn't even know where to go to get $400,000, let alone $4 million. I mean, do you just have connections? No, I started this, um, this whole movement. I actually started like six years ago. So I worked real hard grassroots, you know, style for four years. Um, and we have a local trial attorney here that ha- is in Orlando, but he has offices all over the nation. Um, and his brother is a quadriplegic in a oh wheelchair and uses me- medical marijuana. And so he decided that he was going to take on this cause this year. Um, and so he I heard about that. Was that the Morgan Calling yeah. and Gilbert guy? Exactly. Yes. Amazing. You you might even remember this guy from uh, from living in Tampa, Rich Paul. He was constantly on television, like daytime television, advertising his. Uh, I think it's like just an accident, kind of an attorney, you know, uh, accident and injury. Yeah. And uh, this this gentleman uh, was like on the back page of the phone book. I mean, this guy obviously is He's doing huge. very very well. And mm. I mean, you can if yes. you can afford the back page of the phone book and uh, and television <laughs> ad time, you probably have a few million dollars to your name. So mm. uh, the four million bucks was, was all pretty much bankrolled by this attorney. For the most part, yes. Incredible. Yeah, we did have you know we did have a few hundred thousand come in here and there and. Mm-hmm. Um, but the numbers, you know, I think we ended up with over 5,000 individual donors, you know, so we were doing a pretty good number of internet, you know, um, donations and stuff like that. But really without somebody like John Morgan in Florida, you're not going to get something on the ballot. You know, you just have to have money here. That's just, that's just what it is. Yeah. So, um, and and the reason, but yeah. by the way, for our listeners that don't know, the reason that sixty uh, percent was the requirement in Florida, whereas uh, Alaska, Oregon, they also had some medical cannabis. Prov- or excuse me, not medical. They actually had legalization, mm-hmm. uh, but theirs was fifty percent. That was the level they had to reach. Yeah. The reason why it was sixty percent is because in Florida, the ballot measures are actually constitutional amendments. So that's why there's that higher level of a requirement 
uh, that you have to that hurdle that you have to get over. Do you think this is something well, back, that you go ahead? Back in 2006, we used to have the 50 percent requirement, and back in 2006, somebody did a constitutional amendment that thought we needed 60 percent. Oh, really? Um, yes, huh. yes. Unbelievable that the voters voted this in, and even that amendment only passed. By 55 <laughs> percent. So, so it, this was a pretty today, costly a thing. Lots of hours uh, were put into this. And obviously, you know, 58 percent is darn close. I mean, are you planning on starting another petitioning campaign? How oh, long, yeah. by the way, did it take you to yeah. collect 1.5 million petitions? Uh, well, that we did in – it was less than a year. That's why it cost so much money. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to pay more the closer it is to the deadline. Sure. Um, but uh, I believe we ended up doing it in um, nine months, I believe it was. Mm-hmm. Amazing. So uh, when does the process begin again? Is that your plan? So, yeah, we already got to call into the attorney to see uh, if there's any way we can change the language to maybe make it more amicable for people. Mm-hmm. Um, and, yeah, we're starting the process all over again. And we're taking the, the 58% that we got, and now we can go to the legislators. In the past, when we go up there and try to lobby these idiots, They say, oh, we don't have any support for that issue. Right. And now we can show them, you know, (laughs) medical marijuana got more votes than our governor or our attorney general or probably most of the people on the darn ballot, you know. Kim, I Uh, thank you for calling to share tonight. Can you give out like a website or somewhere people can go to learn more about this? Absolutely. Yes, it's unitedforcare.org. Is our website. Unitedforcare.org. For those of you down in uh, Florida who want to help out, Kim, thanks for the call tonight. Really appreciate it. There's more coming up here on Free Talk Live. Are you ready to surrender your right to buy body armor? No joke. Congress is now trying to outlaw civilian body armor. And if House Bill H.R. 5344 becomes law, you can kiss your right to protect yourself against rifle bullets goodbye. Don't put off your body armor purchase any longer. Go now to InfidelBodyArmor.com. Thousands of military veterans trust their lives to Infidel Body Armor. You should too. Spelled I-N-F-I-D-E-L. Infidel Body Armor. Just won't quit. Do good people ever want to call an attorney just to find out if they're right or wrong? But every time you think about calling an attorney, what are you forced to think about first? Money. If you could call as often as you wanted and talk as long as you need without a bill, would you call? Worry less and live more with lsprotection.com. That's lsprotection.com or call 855-340-SAVE. That's 855-340-7283. Results will vary from case to case. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. The Shire Free Church offers a sanctuary to those seeking an escape from state churches. 
The Shire Free Church is an interfaith, diverse group of people that may not share identical theological beliefs. As a member in or minister of the Shire Free Church, you are a sovereign individual and may be the faith of your choice. We don't claim to have all of the answers. We are open to all peaceful people. We want to learn from each other. What unifies the Shire Free Church and its diverse members is peace, love, and liberty. There are many paths to God, one for every individual. The Shire Free Church does not define a specific path beyond those parameters that must be your foundation. Peace as your way, love as your guide, and liberty as your light. Learn more at church.shiresociety.com. That's church.shiresociety.com. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything you'd like. Just dial in toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You know what? Whoever wins in the national elections, generally, we lose. And not just you and I lose because, well, the Republicans and Democrats certainly agree that they want to control your life even more. But one of the other things they agree on is war, warmongering all around the globe, killing innocent people. And there's uh, one website that does an amazing job of keeping you up to date on all the horrible things going on around the world, antiwar.com. They've got the answers, the facts, and the readership. But what antiwar.com doesn't have is a pot of gold. The war machine has the, main, uh, the magic of the Federal Reserve's printing press and the mainstream media at their beck and call. All antiwar.com has is you. The antiwar.com staff is down to a skeleton crew with minimal pay. They're committed to keeping the website up with the best of the worst of all the bad news, but they can't do it for free. They can't do it without you. They need your donation. Please go to antiwar.com and donate or call them today. They proudly and gladly take Bitcoin, by the way. That's antiwar.com slash donate because war is the health of the states. Ian and Rich with you here in the studio tonight. We'll take your calls about whatever you want, especially if you've got comments on yesterday's election. Look, if it's you know one Democrat versus a Republican, I don't really care who won because in most places it doesn't matter a, a hill of beans who wins those elections. But the ballot measures are interesting from around the country. We just talked to the lady who organized, which is a huge effort, uh, the ballot measure in the state of Florida to... Uh, to make it so that uh, Florida finally has medical cannabis. Florida, of course, a state that is packed full of elderly folks who, in theory, many of them could benefit from medical cannabis, yet it was many of the elderly who voted against the measure. It got 58% of the vote, which in many places would be enough for a ballot measure to pass, but in Florida, ballot measures amend the Constitution, so 60% was required, and they only got 58%, so it didn't cut it. They're gearing up already for the next try at this, which I presume will be in two to four years. I don't know how long they'll have to wait to give it a go. What was it, every two years they had an election in Florida, Rich, or was it every four? I don't even remember. I don't recall. Um, I only remember Florida uh, politics being yeah. depressing. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I can tell you, I don't miss Florida. Uh, I love being in New Hampshire. Rich, you and I moved <laughs> here uh, as with as have done over sixteen hundred or around sixteen hundred people. Uh, we moved here to New Hampshire as part of the Free State Project, and the idea was to get liberty-minded people who agree that the government is way too big and we need to have a government, I think, that according to the Free State Project, that its maximum role would be the protection of life, liberty, and property. Of course, many of us would prefer it have no role whatsoever. And people who describe themselves as libertarians or anarchists or voluntarists have been making the move. And many of them are coming this week, next week. There's people coming all the time here because they're sick and tired of how things are going in places like Florida, Illinois, or wherever it is that you happen to live if you don't live in New Hampshire. I saw Tony Stiles. I don't know if you know Tony, but uh, he's a liberty-oriented talk show host in Omaha, Nebraska. He was posting on his Facebook today how frustrated he is with the situation, the status quo 
there in Nebraska. And of course, you know, as I always do, I suggested that he pack up and get the hell out of there and mm-hmm. come to New Hampshire. And he said that he's he's just about halfway ready to do that at yeah. this point. Well, enough people did it. If enough people did it, we could uh, make a paradise up here. We really could. And it would be relatively quick, I think. Um, yeah. Because right now, at just over 1,600 people in New Hampshire as part of the Free State Project, which, by the way, we have over 16,000 pledged to move. We want to reach 20,000 who will make that pledge. Mm-hmm. Uh, but 1,600 are, are here, and uh, many of them are early movers, as it's called. These people are already getting elected. We had mm-hmm. 15 Free Staters get elected, at least 15. Some are saying 20 uh, last night. And mm-hmm. that's up from about a dozen previously to that. And you add into that the fact that people inside the state, people who love the state, are calling for the Free State Project, quote, the single greatest threat to the state, unquote. Uh, well, there's that. Already. But, but that's not the view of, of all of the locals. And let's face no. it, in, in order to be a voting block large enough to make a, to make a big difference, each, free, each of the 20,000 Free Staters who moves here is going to need to convince about 10 locals. This can't be a hostile takeover. It has to be a matter of getting in and winning the the hearts Absolutely. and the minds of the people who live here. And even the people who say they don't like what I do in terms of alcohol, or in terms of activism, alcoholism, <laughs> activism, will would, uh, you know, even they will come up to me and say, you know, I really agree with the ideas that mm-hmm. you guys are are putting forward and i'm amazed how libertarian new hampshire really is oh absolutely the it's people a, it's a great place to start a project like this like the free state project florida i don't remember how many millions of people are in florida but there's a lot of them it's one of the most populated states out there you know not quite as populated as texas or california but i think it's either number three or four and uh, i'm sorry but there's just the the system is way too uh, it's too protected there. The politicians there, you can't talk to them. They're not interested in what you have to say. They'll pretend like they're interested during campaign season, uh, mm-hmm. but then you never see hide nor hair of them after that. And we were talking about last night how, uh, you know, in, in places like Florida and other places, you can't reach these politicians. But in New Hampshire, you can call them up and they'll answer their home phone. You can call mm-hmm. them. I mean, their home phone numbers in a lot of cases are listed on the state website. Cell phone numbers. I've called cell phones of these you know, these politicians before when they're in office. That's just an incredible level of being able to connect with these individuals that you just don't get anywhere else. So there's a lot of political reasons why New Hampshire was chosen as the destination for the Free State Project. And there are a lot of, in fact, there's great reasons for it. There's 101 of them over at Free State Project's website. And there's actually a brand new trailer that came out today for the brand new 101 Reasons Liberty Moves uh, moves Liberty Lives in New Hampshire. You could live here if you moved here. Mm. Uh, but the, the movie is coming out that's taking the document that we've talked about for years on this show, which to me was a very persuasive reason to move to New Hampshire. I was one of the original voters on the, you know, which state would be the destination for the Free State Project. Mm. And that 101 Reasons document existed back then it's been updated since then obviously but that was so persuasive to me now we're going to see that in video form coming out five days from now actually it's monday the 10th is when the 101 reasons documentary film is going to be released and the trailer is out now so if you go to 101 reasons film or 101 reasons film.com i believe they've uh, they've posted it up there yeah i didn't actually vote on the selection of new hampshire i was a member at that time, but I figured wherever they go, I'm going to go. And some people might decide, you know, if they don't get their favorite state, they're not going to move. So I'll, I'll, I'll let them to decide, decide what state we're going to get. You know what? I take, I take my statement back. The 101 Reasons Film, 101ReasonsFilm.com. I believe they've, they've been so busy. I don't think they've actually updated the website with this yet. Um, but if you go to... Maybe they have. I'll double check that, but I'm, I'm checking on it right now. But if you go to their Facebook page, it is definitely listed there. I shared it mm-hmm. out today as well. Um, so go and check out that trailer. I'm excited about it. I'm one of the co-producers of the movie because I signed on knowing that I know who the, the editor is of the film, Bo Davis. Uh, mm-hmm. And he just did such a fantastic job with Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree, which was the movie that I, I executive produced. I thought, gosh, I got to sign on to this. I mean, if I can get behind what Bo's doing now and and help this 101 Reasons film get out, 
Uh, very exciting. We'll talk more about that on Monday. I just wanted to let people know the trailer is out. So go and check that out and feel free to share it. In fact, I'll put it up on our Facebook, Google Plus, and, uh, and Twitter here in a little bit. So it'll make it easy for you to find. But go and check out the Free State Project at freestateproject.org. It's the answer. Look, I was really tired of banging my head up against the wall in Florida, and that's what it was. I mean, running political campaigns for the libertarians there. I think their libertarian candidate got over 3% this time, and the libertarians in Florida are cheering like this is some sort of great victory. Uh, if you want to actually see libertarians getting elected, then come to New Hampshire. It's happening here. Yeah, it's great to be able to walk up to my friend and have him be a... Uh a legislator and know he's voting for liberty. Yeah, absolutely true. To see someone you know, what not just one person you know getting elected doesn't happen anywhere else. Here, uh, it's hard to count how many people that uh, that we know that are getting elected. It's amazing stuff that's happening. More on the way. You can take control. More on the ballot measures nationwide coming up. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. Majid lives in Nor Devin, Armenia, with his wife, kids, and grandkids, all in the same house. They have cows, but to compete against the big ranchers, Majid needed to get a loan for more cattle. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan for the cows. He bought them, and now he's very happy with the expansion of his farm. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel at any time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. The experts at Web.com want to build your business a successful website for free, just like we did for these current Web.com customers. We've used and and looked at other website designers, but there's nobody better than Web.com. Web.com can build your website in as little as seven days free. Plus, we'll promote it on all the major search engines like Google, Yahoo, and Bing. If after 30 days you're happy, we'll continue to provide promotion, hosting, support, and maintenance, all for one low monthly fee. If not, cancel and pay nothing. If you're in business today and you don't have a web presence, you won't be taken seriously. Call right now and you'll also get a free .com or .net domain name for your new website powered by VeriSign, the world's leading domain name provider. Call 800-297-0154. That's 800-297-0154. No upfront charge for site build, after which ongoing fees apply. Rights to site are relinquished when canceled. Domain included during active service, after which fees apply. That's 800-297-0154. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidavi. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, Buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. 
is Davi Barker from ShinyBadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at ShinyBadges.com, write WORMS in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can dial toll-free 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype, by the way. I don't think I mentioned that tonight. You can contact us uh, via Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. Maybe you would like to comment on the election yesterday. would love to hear what your experience was. Uh, perhaps you were a liberty-minded person running for political office. Maybe you won. I actually asked a question, Rich Paul, on our uh, Facebook page last night. Hey, did you know any libertarian people actually win outside of New Hampshire? I didn't think they did. Turns out there was actually apparently a libertarian elected mayor in some town in arkansas well groovy so yeah so the libertarians have managed to get elected in some places but for the most part libertarian returns were dismal as they always are i looked down the list of uh, t somebody had claimed online last night that texas had two libertarian wins and turns out their claim was just wrong they were just given misinformation i i looked couldn't find that at all the libertarians there mm. were not doing very well. They weren't doing any differently than any libertarians anywhere else. In fact, libertarians running in Florida and Texas in two-way races, it was hard for them to pull more than uh, 15 to 20 percent. Even in a two-way race, mm -hmm. three-way races had them pulling their typical, you know, one to you know half a percent to three percent uh, range. And man, that really just starts to grate on you as uh, as the longer you are a libertarian activist, the more frustrating that becomes. Yeah, I mean that's what made me an anarchist. Is, is that right? Uh, it's it's a big part of it. I mean the failure of the political failure of the Libertarian Party. Yeah, I mean I was a I was a Libertarian for a party Libertarian, and I'll still vote Libertarian. But I was really serious about being a party Libertarian for a while there, and they just never. Not only did they never win, but what I wanted to do was at least spread the ideas, mm. and they couldn't get into the debates. You know, nobody since Ross yeah. Perot has gotten into the debates. Uh, they, they've set the rules to make it very, very difficult for yeah. the Libertarians or Greens or anybody else who's a third party to get into those things. Yeah, which is a brilliant piece of misdirection because we think of the election as happening in November— but really, the important part of it happens in the primary season. Absolutely. So the if you want to share your experience, uh, please do. There's actually a relevant story here, Rich Paul, to what we're talking about of the failure of the Libertarian Party uh, over time. The failure politically, I should should clarify. It was the Libertarian Party that brought me into this movement. So there is that. They are doing the job of getting the message out to some extent, mm -hmm. uh, but obviously they're hamstrung by the political process. Yeah, and also I I would not be well I don't know that I would not be a libertarian today, but the path that I took into um, libertarianism was also through the Libertarian Party. So right. so credit they've where credit definitely due. had some success. Yeah, credit where credit is due. But here's a story from Time Magazine about the libertarian spoiler effect because this is one of the big complaints that people in the other political parties will will level against libertarians. They'll claim they're spoiling the election, that they're, the voters will vote in one way or another, and those votes will be taken away from a Republican or Democratic candidate, and therefore the Libertarian Party candidate acts as a spoiler. But according to an analysis by Time magazine, that just doesn't happen, which is kind mm -hmm. of a, a surprise, I think, to a lot of people. Here's a story from Time. Almost no one seriously thinks that Sean Hoff will be the next senator from North Carolina. And he didn't win. Uh, I think he got about three plus percent. But political observers in both major parties are worried that the pizza delivery man and libertarian candidate could siphon enough votes to sway the election, likely to be one of the closest in the country on Tuesday. And the stakes couldn't be higher. Any one election could determine control of the Senate in 2015. But for which, uh, but which party has more to fear from Sean Hoff? 
Kentucky Senator Rand Paul campaign for Republican nominee Tom Tillis in early October, a move seen as an attempt to shore up libertarian-leaning Republican voters. More recently, however, the American Future Fund, a conservative outside spending group, bet $225,000 that Hoff could flip the election in the Republicans' favor with an ad uh, with an ad campaign focused on his unembarrassed enthusiasm for marijuana aimed to draw away younger supporters of Democratic incumbent Kay Hagan. So they were putting out advertising, and somebody actually called from North Carolina to tell us about this earlier this week. They were putting out advertising promoting, so Republicans were putting out advertising promoting the Libertarian, promoting his views about marijuana, hoping that that would sway Democratic voters to vote for the Libertarian in the hopes that that would push the election to the Republican. Wouldn't it have been easier to get their candidate to, to be right to on support marijuana? marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> Though Hoff is currently polling at around 5%, and again, he didn't even make that in the election. More than the margin between Tillis and Hagen, he's very unlikely to spoil anything other than the hopes of a few misled pot smokers. While the threat of spoiler candidates makes for breathless headlines and titillating front page reads, the real odds of this happening are extremely slim. For starters, it's very rare for a congressional contest to be decided by a margin small enough for a third-party candidate to make a difference. Of the 1,873 elections that Time examined, every House and Senate race going back to 2006, so not quite 10 years' worth, but the bulk of a decade's worth of elections, not including special elections and runoffs, only 70 of those 1,873 elections, only 70 of them were won with less than 50% of the vote, and a libertarian candidate ran in 46 of those 70 elections. The threat of a spoiler candidate is further exaggerated by the common assumption that third-party voters would otherwise turn up at the polls at all. That's the old style to think about voting, says Stanford professor John Krosnick, a social psychologist and polling expert. He says, quote, We've now come to recognize that the candidate's influence turnout. The presence of the third-party candidate can lure people to vote who otherwise wouldn't have voted at all. And that's certainly true. Mm -hmm. It gives people someone worth voting for. It's impossible to know with any precision how people would have behaved without the presence of a third-party candidate. And this is one of the difficulties of an analyzing voting results because mm -hmm. you never know what you can compare it to. You can't really compare an election to other elections very effectively. You can't compare that election to the same election run a different way because you never see the alternate reality in which you know the Libertarian candidate didn't run. You right. don't know how many people would have turned out had the Libertarian candidate not run in the first place. We'll talk more about what these uh, the numbers that Time Magazine crunched here in a moment. Let's go to Bob, who's actually in North Carolina. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Bob. Hey, is this Ian? It is, Bob. What's on your mind tonight? Okay. Um, hey, buddy. I'm calling from Asheville, North Carolina, and uh, we had, uh, you know, Kay Hagan, who's a Democrat, who's a crony capitalist. Um, they tried to play the race card here. Uh, she didn't show up for many of the Armed Services Committee. Uh, she funneled some of her own uh, uh, the federal stimulus money she voted for to her own family. So Democrats couldn't vote for her. Uh, I think that's a red herring to say that it had anything to do with marijuana. Uh, I think a lot of people like to, to label that to libertarians. I'm sorry, I'm uh, confused about what you're saying. To say that what had to do with marijuana? That the libertarian candidate, Sean Haw, who ran in North Carolina, you were just speaking of, and the professor who had stated that he felt like Votes were siphoned off because of marijuana? No, you've totally misunderstood. No, you've just to clarify, Bob, you totally misunderstood what was being said in the Time okay. article. What they said was was that there was a Republican group who funded advertising promoting Sean Haw, and that uh, the idea behind that was they thought it would somehow siphon votes away from the Democrats. What the political professor had to say was that that's a that's a false presumption because in a lot of cases third party candidates can draw voters who otherwise would not have voted. Right, I completely understand that. I happened to call in when you were reading the uh, article, which I think I find interesting for the uh, serendipity of the timing of the call. My my only point was that Tom Tillis. Uh, you should look into the American Legislative Exchange Council, uh, which is ALEC. We have a governor here who represents a large power company. And I think what they want to do is pick a fight with the federal government and the Supreme Court, which I don't really have a problem with. I couldn't vote for the gentleman. 
I did vote for Sean Hall. It had nothing to do with, with marijuana or any of that kind of thing. Um, it, the, the reality is we, if you, we, what we need to figure out is what we can do to get better candidates, run Libertarian, or either that, have them run, as I think I heard you say, in North, uh, New Hampshire as Democrats. Uh, or invade a party, which we did in Indiana, helped run that Libertarian Party there. Uh, I think that's we, we need to talk about solutions instead of our own narcissistic views. You tend to go there all the time. You're talking about maybe what you want as an idealistic world. I've been up to Keene, New Hampshire, pretty cool place. Uh, I think that's the place where you can't carry a beer on the sidewalk, but they have to carry it out to a little like. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's one of the on rules the in uh, in Keene. That's certainly true. So we're, we're working on repealing that. Yeah. So, I mean, as far as quality of candidates go, that's one of the problems with the Libertarian Party. And if, you, if you've if you got further comment, you're welcome to hang on, Bob. Uh, we can analyze this a little, little bit further. But this has always been a problem with the Libertarian Party. There are so few Libertarians. Finding good quality candidates to actually, you know, people who are willing to run for office can be a real challenge. Well, especially people who are willing to lose. And that's There's the that thing. Too. You can get serious people to run if they think they might win. We'll come back with more here. 855-450-FREE. That's the toll-free number here on Free Talk Live. Is the Federal Reserve System a bunch of organized crooks? Ron Paul, G. Edward Griffin, Edwin Vieira, and Ted Baer discuss the Fed in the Telly award-winning movie, Fiat Empire, why the Federal Reserve violates the U.S. Constitution. Inspired by the best-selling book, The Creature from Jekyll Island, Fiat Empire is now available as a two-DVD set at moviepubs.net, realityzone.com, and newswithviews.com. Lumber Liquidators, America's largest specialty flooring store, is using our buying power to offer great deals on over 230 hardwood and laminate floors just in time for the holidays. Get pre-finished three-quarter inch solid maple for $159 a square foot. That's more than half off other stores. Save up to 43% on our thickest and best laminates. Plus, attach padding at no extra cost and get other incredible flooring deals. Plus, 18 months special financing. Get to your local store. These deals are going on now. Visit LumberLiquidators.com to find a store near you. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Wednesday, November 5th, 2014. Gold is trading around $1,171, silver around $16.06, and Bitcoin's trading around $331. Today's precious metal price is brought to you by Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from SovereignMiners.com. Interested in mining Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies? Well, Sovereign Miners has you covered. All purchases come with a free script ISIC miner. Visit SovereignMiners.com to buy your miner today. In the news, Republicans yesterday swept to control of the Senate for the first time in eight years. The GOP will hold control of the Senate that convenes in January after knocking off three incumbent Democratic senators and winning four open seats previously held by Democrats. Republicans did not lose a single contest for a seat the party held going into yesterday's elections. Republicans picked up seats in Arkansas, Colorado, Iowa, Montana, North Carolina, South Dakota, and West Virginia. New Hampshire's Liberty Focus Free State Project 
had a landslide of electoral victories yesterday. Free Talk Live's Ian Freeman reports from New Hampshire. Free State Project participants have likely won at least 15 New Hampshire House seats, running as both Republicans and Democrats. This according to a list of alleged free staters compiled by pro-government group Granite State Progress and their Free State Watch effort. Free staters report that the hater group's list is incomplete, so the actual number of winners is not known, but there are at minimum 15. That's a new record high for the libertarian migration who has elected more liberty-minded people in New Hampshire in a decade than the Libertarian Party has nationwide in 40 years. I'm Ian Freeman, reporting for the Liberty Beat from Keene in the Shire. Today's edition of the Liberty Beat, brought to you by our newest sponsor, eFoods Direct. Redefining the way you think about storable food. Easy to make and great tasting, with a shelf life of over 25 years. To celebrate our new partnership, eFoods Direct is offering Liberty Beat listeners 10% off their purchases. To take advantage of this exciting offer, call 800-620-5520 and mention coupon code LIBERTYBEAT. To learn more or to buy online, visit eFoodsDirect.com. Support also comes from My Magic Mud, detoxifying tooth powder, the most effective and affordable dental care around. Jessica Armand would like to thank Liberty Beat listeners for all of their support. Get a 150 application jar at MyMagicMud.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Wednesday, November 5th, 2014. Check out the website at TheLibertyBeat.com. And like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash the Liberty Beat. According to a federal audit, agents with the ATF allowed a known smuggler to bring thousands of grenade parts from the United States into Mexico. The ATF allowed Jean-Baptiste Kangaroo to continue operating his smuggling business in the hopes that they could track the shipments to drug cartels and other criminals. The ATF lost track of Kangaroo and his weapons. Eventually, he was charged by Mexican officials. Materials to build over a 1,000 hand grenades were found at his home in Mexico. The material was the same equipment the ATF allowed Kangaroo to smuggle across the border. One of the co-founders of file-sharing website, The Pirate Bay, has been sentenced to three and a half years in prison related to hacking charges. Gottfried Warg, also known as the hacker Anacata, was found guilty of hacking into the mainframe of IT provider CSC in Denmark. The court of Fredericksburg in Copenhagen claimed that large amounts of sensitive personal information were downloaded during the hack. Facebook Inc. has stated that government requests for user information have increased around 24% in the first six months of 2014. Reuters reports that governments requested data from Facebook 34,946 times. The company stated they are aggressively seeking to invalidate these sweeping warrants and to force the government to return the data it has seized. Did you know you can support the Liberty Bean when shopping on Amazon.com? Well, you can. All you have to do is log into your account after clicking our Amazon affiliate link at LibertyBeat.com slash Amazon. That's right. You can help the Liberty Beat continue to deliver hard-hitting Liberty news and activist updates by doing your Amazon shopping after following our link at TheLibertyBeat.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Wednesday, November 5th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. Caitlin Taggart was a beautiful, lively girl who loved laughing and playing outside, but all that changed at the age of 12. Caitlin slipped into a persistent vegetative state, confining her almost entirely to her bed and Facebook. She doesn't even have basic motor functions anymore. We literally have to drag her to the car to drive her to school in the morning. She's totally unresponsive when we talk to her. Her eyes just roll back in her head. Caitlin, honey, it's your dad. With no hope that their daughter would ever recover, the Taggarts decided to seek legal permission to end Caitlin's life. It is the most difficult decision we've ever had to make, but we just keep reminding ourselves that the real Caitlin is already gone. That's just her body texting. We give her one painless injection, and that's it. Her eyes may flutter a bit, or she may murmur, are you for real killing me right now? This is the Onion News Network.
This is Free Talk Live. We're launching into the second hour of the program. You can take control toll-free and bring up whatever you want. Plenty of election stuff to talk about here tonight. We haven't even scratched the surface of the list of ballot measures. You know, who voted for what? How'd they do all across the country? I've got a rundown here. We'll get into that here in a moment. Uh, With you tonight in the studio, you've got Ian here. And Rich Ball. And you can join us also via Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. We've got a gentleman on the line from North Carolina. Bob is in Asheville expressing some frustration with the political process, with the election, with the quality of candidates uh, within the libertarian movement. And, Bob, how long have you been involved with the libertarian uh, movement? Uh, well, I was born when JFK died, so I uh, became quite aware of politics when I was about 13, 14 years old, but really never got involved when, until I was in my 20s uh, through a friend. I actually worked in Washington, D.C. for a, a Republican representative. Uh, he would be considered a Tea Partier now. I've been trying to get Tea Partiers and Occupy Wall Street people together for a long time. You know, I don't care if the NSA or CIA or whomever it is wants to pay me a visit. We're not doing their drugs. They bring them in. We're not doing, playing any of that game. My story is we need to take back our constitutional form of government. And what I hear you guys saying all the time, I'm not trying to challenge you here, but um, what what you guys happen to be saying all the time is that, hey, it's all about me and the idealistic world that we have, and we need to be pragmatic. It's sort of a cross between, if you listen to these guys, Alex Jones and Josh Tolley, you know, I mean, where the rubber meets the road, and yeah, you better be afraid, so do something about it. But we have a, a unlawful monetary system. We have a uh, when people do vote, they don't have a government they can actually vote for because it is an administrative uh, uh, agency. Uh, it's it's a corporate it's a corporate scheme that has been set up, and this government has been taken over. So the best thing you guys can do is you know keep up your your free state thing and just do the best you can. Uh, because I don't really, I don't think you could give me a good answer to beat the party machine. But because we have psychotic leaders of this new world you're order, looking, is that what you're looking people. for? You're looking for an answer to beat the party machine? Because the answer is, if you love liberty, you should move to New Hampshire. I mean, that's the answer. That's what's working. And I thank you, Bob, for the call tonight. Uh, that's what's working. People are getting elected here as both Republicans and Democrats. That doesn't happen with the Libertarian Party pretty much anywhere else. It's it's working here and it's working in a lot of strange ways. The Manchester Republican County Committee is mostly run by free staters. Oh, really? Yeah, they have a big part of that um, of that committee, and that makes a difference. It would be great to have the New Hampshire Republican Party start making uh, press releases that say the National Party is wrong mm. on various. Uh, on various uh, issues, and I think that's a possibility in New Hampshire. Now, it's not yet to the point, as I understand it, Rich, the the sort of the Republican Party here in New Hampshire, there has been a lot of free staters and liberty-oriented people who've gotten involved, but I don't believe they've gotten to the point of takeover yet. Now, maybe what you're saying is in Manchester, they've yeah, got it's, the party apparatus. it's one apparatus. county. Okay, but the actual state, uh, statewide, there's still some work to be done as oh, far as takeover. Oh, statewide, there's a lot, of, a lot of work to be done. Um, but we're actually seeing uh, free staters winning in Manchester as Democrats as well. Uh, you've got uh, Elizabeth Edwards, who took mm-hmm. first place in her race uh, for state representative yesterday. She even got more votes than did the incumbent in that particular race. And she was running as a Democrat, a liberty-oriented Democrat. So it really, you can win either way here in New Hampshire. If you get the right message of freedom out there and uh, people hear it and they know you're different from the Republican or Democratic establishment, there's a lot of people in New Hampshire who are excited about that. You know, if we get to the point where both the Democrat and the Republican or a free stater will be kind of like the rest of the country, but in a different way than the rest of the country, the Democrat and the Republican have the same agenda, but it's not an agenda of freedom. It would be nice to see a a freedom Democrat running against a Liberty Republican. Didn't that happen in 2012 when uh, Tim O'Flaherty defeated uh, Free Stater Dan Garthwaite in in an election? Oh, were they running against each other directly? Oh, that's brilliant. So it's already happened. (laughs) I mean, it it happened. My dreams have already come true. I just didn't know it. (laughs) It happened two years ago, and so we're gonna. I think we're gonna see that happen more often because uh, more the more people move here to New Hampshire as part of the Free State Project. 
the more uh, you know, the more people are going to be running in political elections on both sides of the Republicans and Democrats, and mm-hmm. that means we're going to see more of these free stater versus free stater or liberty activist versus liberty activist contests. Because mm-hmm. I should point out, Rich, that you know I've pointed out earlier that 15 free staters at least have won as of yesterday in New Hampshire the state rep seats, but that mm-hmm. doesn't include the liberty oriented state reps. Uh, there's a there's the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance, which actually endorses political candidates. And from what I understand, the majority of the candidates that they endorsed, which is several dozen uh, candidates, mm-hmm. they won yesterday too. So there may be, according to an article over at Benswan.com, there may be as much of a 20 percent voting block. Uh, in the state house. Now, that's not a, like ben, a pure was libertarian. Was Ben Swan writing about New Hampshire specifically, yes. or is there, so was he talking about it because of the Free State Project? Do you think? Because uh, I've it's noticed- definitely mentioned the Free State Project is definitely talked. I mean, the the thrust of the article is about the Free Staters winning, but they mention that the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance is also, you know, their candidates are also winning. Now, these are not pure libertarians. They're mm-hmm. people who to get the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance's vote. Uh, to get their endorsement, you mm-hmm. have to sort of be liberty oriented on most of the issues, you know, most of the time. So mm-hmm. it's not necessarily like a purity test with the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance. So the folks they will endorse aren't like as maybe as voluntarist as mm-hmm. you might like them to be, but they're more likely to vote for freedom. So that's a good thing as well. I mean, the numbers here, you just can't match anywhere else. Yeah. And you know, it's it's so nice to actually see people win and to see progress and to see legislation getting passed or even better repealed. Um, you know, it, it gives me a lot of hope. Absolutely. Now, that's one thing that New Hampshire doesn't have that other states do. They don't have the ballot measure process. But in a way, that's a good thing. It, the ballot measure can be a double-edged sword. Sure, you can see something like gay marriage or uh, medical cannabis pass through via va- ballot measure or even legalization, as we saw in uh, in Alaska, which we haven't really talked about that yet, but we will if we get the chance. Mm-hmm. Um, so ballot measures can seem very attractive. But at the same time, it's, not, it's also something that uh, people who love the state can use as well. So they can put ballot measures on that, that change things for the worse. So there were some minimum wage increases that passed mm-hmm. uh, ballot measures. And then in Florida, when I lived down there, there was all kinds of stupid stuff uh, that passed, like the smoking ban that happened in Florida, the indoor smoking mm-hmm. ban that passed via ballot measure. And so if you don't have the ballot measure process, it means everything has to go through the legislature. And to some extent, I think that's better. I know that that means that New Hampshire is behind the ball as far as uh, not having medical or not having uh, legalized cannabis. Maybe we would have had it sooner had there been a ballot measure process. But who knows what other crazy stuff would have been put on the ballot uh, through that process? Yeah. And if, you know, if they'd picked a lot of if they'd made a lot of bad choices before the street free state project came here free state project might never have come so there's something else i wanted to talk about since our last caller bob had brought it up the quality of the candidates when you are in a place where there's very few people who are libertarian minded who are liberty minded mm-hmm. then your selection pool from which you can find people willing to run for office is very small And so because there are very few people in the pool to begin with who could even possibly consider running as a liberty minded person, then you, you know, whittle it down even further to the people who are actually willing to run. So you've got the people who are libertarians, most of whom are not willing to run, then whittle it down to the people who are willing to run. And you're probably dealing with, you know, a percentage or two or five percent of the existing libertarian population, and you're talking about next to zero, if not zero, candidates. And so basically, the Libertarian Party all across the country, they take whoever they can get. Anybody who's willing, you know, if you can fog a mirror uh, and sign a, a form, you're qualified to run with the Libertarian Party. Hopefully, in the mean, you know, hopefully while you're running, you'll be able to spit out a few words about how freedom is a good choice. But Libertarian candidates aren't known for being the, you know, the most well-groomed, I guess, of political candidates. And that's something else that we're going to see uh, happen here in New Hampshire that won't happen anywhere else. Because we have more Libertarians here, we've got a better pool from which to choose better candidates. Candidates and those candidates have a have a hope of winning. Nobody's yeah. going to run and lose. Yep. More coming up here in moments. Here at eight fifty five four fifty free. You can share your thoughts. Take control of Free Talk Live at eight fifty five four fifty free. 
Here's a special message for those of you who owe the IRS at least 10000 or more in back taxes. The IRS has special programs in place that could eliminate or reduce your tax debt by thousands of dollars. Call the tax helpline that has been set up to help you. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. Stop the wage garnishments, levies, and tax liens now. Once you've qualified and enrolled, the IRS will stop all the collection activities against you. These unique programs have been allocated to help the economy and significantly reduce or eliminate your tax burden. The IRS is currently accepting reduced settlements and other favorable programs. You may qualify for substantial savings, so get the help you need. For free information and to see if you qualify, take down the number now for the Tax Representation Hotline. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. 800-691-6129. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Farmers keep livestock lean and healthy with a mineral-rich diet. Then, before market, they cut off minerals, leading them to crave high-calorie grains. If weight control is this easy, why prescribe surgery for humans? Introducing Longevity. You could avoid 900 diseases by getting 90 essential nutrients from Longevity. Check out 90 for Life at tobeyoungagain.com or call 855-79-YOUNG. That's 855-79-YOUNG or tobeyoungagain.com. Longevity. It's all about saving money, getting healthy, and creating wealth. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Americans are reeling from Obamacare, higher prices, and an epidemic of policy lapses. AsiaRunLikeHellGuide.com has you covered. World-class medical and surgery at one of Asia's most modern hospitals. 300 doctors, surgeons, and dentists serving 300,000 patients a year. Fractions of U.S. prices. Friends or family forced to go out of pocket? Avoid bankruptcy. Tell them to run. Run like hell. Hit us up now. We'll show you how. AsiaRunLikeHellGuide.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Bring up anything you want here. Toll free, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Talking about the election after the fact here, sort of the post-election wrap-up night on Free Talk Live. With you in the studio, you've got Ian. Ren Richball. And don't forget, you can join us online over at freetalklive.com. Please enjoy the features that we have for you. Those other talk show hosts charge you 
or accessing their websites. Now, of course, one of the ways you can support Free Talk Live and enjoy our free website is by buying some gold and silver. If you've been thinking about getting these classic alternative currencies that hold their value very, very effectively over time compared to, oh, I don't know, the U.S. dollar, uh, they do a good job uh, protecting you against the dollar's inflation. You can uh, go and get some over at silver.freetalklive.com, and you can get them from Midas Resources. That's a company that is behind our syndicate, the company that puts us on the uh, the radio waves all across the country. Uh, they're backed up by Midas Resources, which is a gold and silver dealer, and they do a great job of it. They've been doing it for a couple decades now at least, and you can go and get hooked up with um, all the gold and silver you want over at silver.freetalklive.com. Or call them toll-free. Their number is 877-857-9938. That's 877-857-9938. Or go to silver.freetalklive.com. Is that a Peter Schiff thing? No, no, no. Uh, I don't know. I don't think he's involved with uh, with Midas. Okay. Uh, I think he's like an investment guy or something like that. But Midas Resources will actually sell you real silver, not some sort of paperwork that says you have silver in a vault somewhere. They'll mm-hmm. actually sell you and send you the, the real deal. So yeah. go to silver.freetalklive.com. We're talking about the uh, third parties and the, the claim that third parties will be a spoiler. Usually the Libertarian Party or the Green Party, they're accused in the press or accused uh, by political zealots of being spoilers in an election. That The idea being that if a libertarian enters a race, then people from one party or the other will go and vote for that person, and that'll cause one of the major party candidates to lose, who otherwise would have won had the libertarian up and in the race. That's the theory, at least. Yeah, I mean, you have to look at the opportunity cost for that, though. I mean, for one thing, um, it's assuming that all libertarian votes come from one side or the other. Now, I was a Democrat and became a libertarian. I voted for uh, Bill Clinton in his first term, and in 1996, I voted for for Harry Brown. And, you know, if you can get a Republican and a Democrat to vote libertarian, then it doesn't change what happens for the the, uh, Republicans and the Democrats. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, mistaken uh, presumptions made in order to believe that the libertarian has spoiled an election. You're pointing out one of them. Um, there's also the idea that uh, you know, or they, they ignore the idea that the libertarian also attracts people into voting who had not previously been interested. So, and of course, you never really know what those numbers are. You could do exit polling to get some idea about it, but hardly anybody ever exit polls about the libertarians. So there's precious little data about this. You know, how many people showed up to the polls who otherwise wouldn't have shown up at all because they're sick and tired of both Republicans and Democrats? What about people who showed up to the polls for the first time ever? Young people, for instance, who have been mm-hmm. attracted in uh, to voting by the Libertarian Party candidates. So the idea that they're a spoiler is pretty ridiculous. But not only is it ridiculous for those reasons that we've mentioned, but Time Magazine actually ran the numbers, and turns out they've never really spoiled anything ever anyway. Like you know, just mm-hmm. just by running the numbers, they've been so igni- insignificant over the years that it hasn't been worth anything. And let me continue with the story here. So Time.com reporting here, they've got Stanford professor John Krosnick, social psychologist, polling expert. He points out the idea that the third-party candidates can lure people to vote who otherwise wouldn't have voted at all. And, of course, it's impossible to know with any precision how people would have behaved without the presence of the third-party candidate. And it turns out that even asking them in polls is unreliable, given that pollsters typically report unrealistically high turnout figures when they ask people if they voted. The picture is confounded yet further by the fact that a distaste for the major parties is often the motivation that draw a person to a third-party candidate in the first place. That's a view shared by Emily Savet, who drew 10,630 votes as a libertarian in the 2012 race for Michigan's 1st District. She says, quote, I do honestly think that a lot of people wouldn't have voted. They're not engaged anymore because they don't like the choice. The Republican, unquote, the Republican in that contest, Congressman Dan Beneshek, edged out his Democratic challenger by 1,881 votes. Depending on whose base you think Salvette drew from, you might call her either a spoiler or nearly one. But Salvette says she saw support from voters with a variety of viewpoints, including people who supported her views on everything from medical marijuana to gun rights. This is where the spoiler math falls apart. 1,881 votes doesn't seem like a large share of Salvette's 10,630. But to tip the election to the Democrat, 
every single one of the people who voted for Salvette would have had to show up had Salvette not been in the race. Very unlikely. And they would have had to uh, they would have had to break for the Democrat by a sizable margin of 59 to 41. The fewer votes that show up, the larger that margin needs to be. Of course, it's typically the Republican candidate who feels more threatened by a libertarian in the race. Republicans think that the libertarian vote comes out of their column, says University of Virginia political scientist Larry Sabato. In fact, there's evidence from exit polls in the 2013 Virginia governor's race that libertarian Robert Sarvis, who garnered over 145,000 votes in a race decided by about 55,000, drew more support from the winner Terry McAuliffe, a Democrat, Mm -hmm. than from Republican Ken Cuccinelli. The majority of Sarvis's supporters said they otherwise would not have voted. So most of them wouldn't have bothered to vote, and of those who would have voted anyway, they would have voted for the Democrats. So all of the presumptions being made by people in politics about who, you know, where these libertarian votes are coming from, they're, they're all wrong. The only time I've ever voted for a Republican, it was in the uh, Republican primary, and there were no Democrats running. Um, I don't— mm. I. I have always been more horrified by the Republicans and by the Democrats because God is apparently a Republican, and and according to his followers, I don't like God's positions. It's it's certainly possible to find more compelling cases for spoilers. In 2012, Democrat Jim Matheson beat challenger Mia Love in Utah's 4th District by 768 votes, while Libertarian Jim Bain received 6,439 votes and earned some unkind attention from Republicans before the votes were fully counted. Even so, half of Bain's voters would have needed to show up without him in the race. Those supporters would have had to vote for love over Matheson by at least a 61 to 39 margin to even make a difference. And even the most famous supposed spoiler in modern history, the 2000 presidential election in Florida, is less clear-cut than most of us recall. One statistical analysis of polls and ballot returns suggests that Ralph Nader's supporters would only have broken for Gore over Bush by a 60-40 margin if they broke for either candidate at all. That many of Nader's supporters would otherwise have turned out and supported either major uh, major party candidate is far from established. When an election is that close, blaming a third party candidate is the electoral equivalent of blaming Bill Buckner for spoiling the 1986 World Series for the Boston Red Sox. It's merely the most visible excuse for a loss that could have been reversed if one of a thousand factors had gone just a little bit better. Mm. So there's uh, some of the numbers, kind of interesting stuff there, showing that essentially libertarians haven't really ever spoiled anything ever. The toll-free number, 855-450-FREE, despite the protestations of the people in the Republican and Democratic parties. So share your thoughts here, 855-450-FREE. Coming up, we'll get to the ballot measures nationwide. There were a number of them for cannabis, some minimum wage as well. We'll give you the details on what happened. You can share your thoughts with us as well here on Free Talk Live at 855-450-FREE. I am so excited. My Ghost 80% AR-15 rifle just arrived. (laughs) I bought it from Guns80.com. I've wanted an 80% AR-15 ever since my buddy Mark got his. I just had to have one. And when I was on the website at Guns80.com, not only did they have a great deal on the Ghost ARs, but I also found lots of other really cool stuff. And they're 80% specialists. At guns80.com, they have a great selection of pistol kits and rifle kits. All of them can be legally shipped straight to your front door. 80% lowers and jigs starting at 50 bucks. 80% rifle kits, 500 bucks. Everything you need to build an AR in your home, all at guns80.com. Cool part, 100% legal in most states. So, get your AR-15 today. I got mine. Now it's your turn. Go to Guns80.com. I can't wait to get mine built. Get your Ghost AR-15 today at Guns80.com. Go to Guns80.com. That's Guns, the number 8080.com. Hi, I'm Derek J. I don't want a politician to represent me. To me... Government is the idea that one group of people can coerce everyone to comply with an edict or face increasing punishments up to and including death. Despite perhaps the most noble of intentions, the best government services are a far cry from what could be provided for by voluntary interactions. Besides, the people who call themselves the government wage wars and put peaceful people in jail for crimes involving no victims. 
If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. There is no such thing as attention span, according to Jerry Seinfeld, who figures that people have an infinite attention span if you are entertaining them. Hey, he's kept us from channel surfing for several decades, and now he's making more millions as a Las Vegas headliner. With money and attention so scarce now, effective communication skills have never been more important, especially if you're looking for work. So choose every single word as though it was the last word the person you're speaking to will hear. Otherwise, it might be. Avoid redundancies such as added bonus, advance warning, end result, prior history, or personal belongings. And avoid cliches like the plague. Just kidding. For more tips, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You're invited to take control of the airwaves here. Toll free number is 855-450 free coming up a recap of the various ballot measures some of them pretty interesting stuff uh marijuana minimum wage gun control we'll get to those things here in a moment you're also welcome to share your thoughts with us here the toll-free number is 855-450 free uh and you can join us via skype our skype username is lrn.fm if you are online you really should be concerned about your privacy and if you are, then please go to proxpn.com slash FTL and grab ProXPN's free software. It's available for Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, Android devices, and even those of you with Linux, you can get ProXPN working as well. What does it do? Why do you want this? Well, it encrypts your data connection online. Your internet service provider, they're probably logging all the websites you visit and logging all of the search terms that you enter. You can stop that from happening by getting ProXPN and encrypting your data connection. ProXPN.com slash FTL. That's where you can go and get the software, and then when you're ready to upgrade to their premium account, where you get unlimited bandwidth, servers around the world that you can access, you can privately torrent, you can get past regionally blocked websites with ProXPN. It is such a useful service, and you can get it all as low as 5 bucks a month, actually even lower, and I'll tell you how. The way you do it is you use our discount code. There's two of them. One of them is for cash buyers, people with credit cards or whatever. Uh, you want to use code FTL50. That's FTL like Free Talk Live and the number 50 as in 50% off of the price of their annual account. That brings your price down to about 5 bucks a month. But if you want to save even more, you can pay with Bitcoin by using code FTLBTC and you'll get 62% off the price of the annual account. Uh, plus, you get it all with a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee, and ProXPN does not keep records of your online habits at all. So don't forget these codes, FTL50 or FTLBTC. Go to ProXPN.com FTL. 
and get a great discount on privacy that is priceless. We'll get to the ballot measures coming up here in a moment. But first, Pete is on the line in California. Pete, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Rich. Okay, Ian and Rich, let me ask you, uh, did the Homeless Bill of Rights pass? What is the Homeless Bill of Rights? It was something that Illinois and Rhode Island and uh, California were talking about to protect, to, to make homeless people protected from hate crimes by the police and by businesses and whatnot, and just allow people to not uh, to sleep in their car and to sleep on the ground without being paper cutted to death by public servants. That was something that's uh, it's being talked about, you know. Was you know that, that on was the on ballot? The what, I was asking you if you know if that was on there. Cause, well, I have not heard anything about the the so-called homeless bill of rights. It doesn't sound like you're even very aware of it at all. I mean, are you saying that it was on the ballot for people to vote for? I was asking you if you knew because I would support that. I heard that 47 passed. 47 was something that was good. You know? What does that mean, 47? Prop 47, out here. Where, where, in California? Tell me more. What does that mean? Yeah. California, it's something to, to help people to not be so screwed by the system if they've been put in prison and different stuff. Hmm. It's supposedly it, uh, it decriminalizes a lot of stuff. They're a previous criminal, uh, and it does something to help people that were in the system to get their stuff reduced to misdemeanors. Well, if, if getting people out of uh, prison is possible who haven't harmed anyone else, and I support it, I don't know what the details are on that. But, Pete, thanks for the call tonight. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. The rundown I have here is from ABC News. It sounds like Pete wasn't really too sure about where or you know what the details were on those uh, ballot measures. If you know more, you're welcome to call in. Uh, the lowdown I have here doesn't have what he was talking about. That doesn't mean that they weren't on the ballot. I think that ABC News in this case is only highlighting what they consider to be the most relevant mm. nationwide. Um, so maybe stuff that are minor tweaks to the prison system in California. Just you know maybe that didn't make this list. Uh, the list again from ABC News. Here are the. Uh, some of the more important uh, ballot measures from yesterday. Alaska, marijuana legalization. I was up pretty late, and this, of course, you know, Alaska's five hour, four or five hours away from uh, our time zone here in Eastern Time. And so by late night, they still hadn't had any numbers in on Alaska. But it turned out that Alaskans did vote to legalize cannabis. 52% of them voted for it, as a matter of fact. Uh, the summary at ABC News points out it's the second time in recent years that Alaskans have voted on legalizing marijuana. The last attempt, a decade ago, in 2004, failed 44% to 55%. So they turned the tide and really? they made it happen. Um, do you know if that involves like licensed marijuana shops or if it's just like, we're not going to prosecute you for having weed? Excellent question. Here's a more detailed story from the uh, Alaska Dispatch News. After years of debate and decades of semi-legal status, Alaskans will finally be able to light up legally. On Tuesday, voters approved ballot measure 2, an initiative legalizing recreational marijuana in Alaska by about 52%. Uh, with the vote, Alaska joins Washington, Colorado, and Oregon, the latter of which also approved a similar initiative on Tuesday as the first states in the country to legalize pot. Washington and Colorado, of course, approved their initiatives in 2012. The initiative will not become law until 90 days after the election is certified, which is expected in late November. Per the law, the state can then create a marijuana control board expected to be housed under the Department of Commerce, Com uh, Community, and Economic Development. That group will then have nine months to craft regulations dealing with how marijuana businesses will operate. The initiative was years in the making. They go on to talk about how uh, it didn't work out 10 years ago. And then they interview some supporters and, you know, get their thoughts on things. But, yeah, so it looks like looks like the details have yet to be hammered out, but essentially they've got another year to hammer out those details. I wish I could exit poll those people and say, you know, find out how many of them would have supported marijuana legalization without the creation of a marijuana cartel. Yeah, that's an excellent question. Um, I'd, I'd love to see a poll, uh, poll done like that here in New Hampshire. Yeah. Because I hate the idea of taking the plant, marijuana, out or cannabis out of the hands of the black market and then just putting it in the hands of a criminal gang called the U.S. government or the New Hampshire government or whatever. Yeah. I mean, the good news is if you get a bag with an official prescription on it, you can keep refilling it with your own weed that you grow in your basement. The, but uh, That's a great point. It would be nice if you didn't have to. The Yes campaign fought vigorously to get out their message of the failures of marijuana prohibition across the state. 
They contended that Ballot Measure 2 would regulate and tax a substance already being used by over 100,000 Alaskans each year. Doing so would begin to eliminate the black market and prevent people from being arrested for possessing or using a substance that many argue is objectively safer than alcohol. The campaign noted that Ballot Measure 2 would allow for regulation of marijuana in a manner similar to alcohol by controlling the types of products sold, prohibiting sales to those under 21, and taxing marijuana at $50 per ounce wholesale. That's not too bad. That's, I think, better than Colorado. Yeah, I don't know what the taxes are in Colorado exactly, but I know it was sticker shock when I looked at them, and I was was pretty surprised at at how much the the state was pulling in. And then I think in in Washington state, they're taxing it uh, like 25% at three different levels. I think the production level, like the farm, and then the wholesale level gets taxed. There's almost like a VAT tax, and then the retail level. So. It just, they just keep taxing it in, uh, oh, in wow. Washington State. That's my understanding. And they take twenty percent three times. I think it was twenty five percent, but I could be wrong about that. If you're in Washington State and you know for sure, feel free to uh, to call us up at eight fifty five four fifty free and clarify. So you know, so there's a little bit of information. It looks like they're intending on uh, regulating this, and we don't know the details on how that's going to pan out. But obviously. You know, there's a there's a certain group of people in Alaska who, you know, they fought against this. I mean, it was a close it was a close call uh, in Alaska. And those people who fought against it, you can better believe they're going to be throwing in their two cents into the political regulatory process. And so mm. who knows what this is going to look like a year from tonight? Yeah, it's a good question. I'd, I'd hate to see him end up like New Hampshire where there's a medical marijuana law, but we haven't yet gotten cards printed oh my god yeah that's uh that's an embarrassment but it was it was always a weak one uh in new hampshire the the medical program that was put forth was pathetic and at least it's there it's something mm-hmm. it's a starting point and hopefully it'll have the reciprocity in it i haven't read the 26 pages of the legislation so i can't say for sure what's in it but hopefully people with cards from California and Maine and other places will be respected in, in New Hampshire, which means you might be able to get a card somewhere else and then bring it to New Hampshire and not have to go through the, the hassle here. But Actually, my attorney ad- advised me to get an out-of-state medical we'll card. Back. Have you thought about owning gold? There are lots of reasons to own precious metals. A hedge against inflation. When the dollar tanks, metal go up. A barter currency. You can disempower the Fed by using real money. And no one knows the future. In an economic collapse, metals are likely to be a currency. Do as I've done for years. Buy your gold and silver and precious metals from Midas Resources through gold.freetalklive.com. That's gold.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. With autumn in the air, it's time to think about getting ready for winter. And it's time to save at HerbalHealer.com. You'll find amazing seasonal savings to prepare you for the fight against cold and flu season. Like Oregacillin to promote lung health. 30 capsules regularly $34.95, now only $25. HHA Olive Leaf, the natural antiviral, normally $16.95, now 60 capsules are just $12. HHA Elderberry Power, a great flu and virus fighter, regularly $16.95, 60 capsules, now $10. Save on all our homeopathic detoxes. Choose from lungs, kidney, liver, brain, libido, or whole body, normally $26.95, now just $20. Visit HerbalHealer.com and click on the Fall Winter Specials button to save on all our natural cold and flu-fighting products. Also explore our Herbal Healer Academy correspondence courses that teach you how to handle your health naturally. HerbalHealer.com, healing the world with nature, one person at a time, since 1988. Free Talk Live. Well, let's say that the Chinese uh, troops decide to come over here because uh, the local governments here have asked them to come here and, and help out with things, uh, you know, just, you know, to controlling traffic and, and stuff like that. Would you be all right with that? Would If you were polled, would you say you're cool and uh, great? It would depend on, I know not, no, I wouldn't like it, but it would no? also depend on the situation. If I had a, a group of uh, radical, say, Christians going around, you know, terrorizing and bombing and, and killing other 
religious sects because they didn't believe in what they believe in. And we need to help. Yeah, I may at that point. Be now, what if some troops, we, it's not like we have a group of people. What if some of those Chinese Jews. troops by accident killed, mm, say, your wife? Um, how would you feel about those Chinese troops at that point? I'm sure I would have a whole different opinion. Yeah, I bet, bet you, you would. would. That's, that's an honest, that's a you honest answer. You are sir. an awesome caller. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Gabino lives in Palcapata, Peru. He buys old appliances like irons, radios, and TV sets, fixes them up, and resells them. He saw an opportunity to expand his business and needed a loan to buy more appliances. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan, and the expansion was a success. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time, get a free pound to try out the subscription, cancel anytime, coffee.freetalklive.com. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, dial toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. With you tonight in the studio, you've got Ian here. And Rich Paul. And don't forget, join us online at freetalklive.com. If you like what we're doing here on Free Talk Live, then please, one of the ways to support the show is by shopping with us. You go to shop.freetalklive.com. You'll find links to Amazon there. There's Amazon US, Amazon UK, and Amazon Canada. You just click into the right Amazon for you, and Free Talk Live will get a cut of the purchase price. Very simple. Very easy to do, and you get the same great Amazon selection that you're used to with the fr- same free super saver shipping deals and all of that, same prices, etc. You're just entering through our affiliate link, so Free Talk Live gets a cut of the sale. So start your shopping, please, at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. As we continue with your calls and thoughts coming up, we'll do more of the ballot measures. What made it? What didn't nationwide? We've got some of the rundown here from ABC News. But first, Chris, in the police state of Connecticut. Chris, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, good evening, guys. I just wanted to uh, discuss why I think medical marijuana laws are actually very detrimental to the cause of ultimately legalizing the recreational use and production of marijuana. Okay, shoot. All right, well, for instance, here in the police state of Connecticut, the uh, honorable legislature and governor, they did pass a medical marijuana law last year. But the humdinger about it is they basically said, well, okay, five companies— can buy a $1 million license to sell medical marijuana to select patients in this state. So that tells me that a lot of people have to make back a lot of money, and there's no way in Hades that they're going to ever allow recreational marijuana in this state until those bills are paid off. You know what I'm saying? Well, I mean, I get where you're coming from. Certainly it's true that big companies that are politically connected get favors from politicians. There's no doubt about that, but... I mean, the fact is, both Colorado and Washington State had medical programs before they went ahead and legalized it. And I believe that statement is true about Alaska and Oregon as well. Uh, and now both Alaska and Oregon have also legalized. So the well, evidence is certainly. the evidence is that legal that uh, medical programs do lead to legalization. It just takes a little bit of time. That that might be the case, but you got to be careful not to get a cartel like setup like we got here in Connecticut. Where I don't think it'll be ten years before you get recreational pot here. Hmm. And look at your governor up there; she's so avidly against home grow, and it's probably you know there's money to be lost by the state thugs if people can grow their own medicine. Yeah, that's definitely true. And I have heard about medical marijuana dispensaries uh, spending money to try to prevent. Uh, de- decriminalization or legalization because they do want to protect their privilege. That's true. Generally, I don't think it's a big enough industry that they would have that much pull. I mean, you've already got big brewing, big pharma, 
uh, and big organized crime who will do anything to keep marijuana illegal. So I don't know if adding the dispensaries to that uh, motley crew of characters will make a big difference. I, I think that I agree with with what Chris is saying as far as yeah, don't create them an, a uh, an oligopoly or whatever a group of companies. A that, cartel, basically. Yeah. Hey, could I quickly make another point about marijuana and prohibition? Sure. Go ahead. Well, uh, you know, smoking marijuana is obviously probably not the best way to to take it. If if you must do so, you'd probably rather have a, an oil ingest it in an edible, correct? I would like to anyway. But I like vaporizing. I, That's a nice, convenient way that doesn't take quite as long as uh, as eating. As far as like safety is concerned, I think vaporization is a very good one. I like to that, smoke, that is, but that's that because I like the it. process. Mm -hmm. But I just want to draw a parallel to like back in uh, alcohol prohibition, people started making hard liquor because it was easier. And due to the fact that we can't just afford to make a batch of brownies for three hundred dollars uh, you know the cost of an ounce we have to smoke it in order to get the best bang for our buck and that's just a, a horrible side effect of prohibition chris thanks for the call tonight i appreciate hearing from you the toll-free number is 855 450 free oregon becomes the fourth state with full marijuana legalization according to the polls yesterday uh, after Colorado and Washington last year and joining Alaska on Tuesday night, this also happens to be the third time Oregonians voted on pot legalization in their state, having rejected the ballot initiatives in 2012 and 2010. So, you know, if it doesn't work out the first time, try again and then again, and maybe it'll actually work out the third time. Mm. Uh, one of the reasons this attempt was successful may have been that voters aged 30 to 44 turned out at a slightly higher rate than those 65 or older this time. Residents will be able to possess eight ounces of marijuana at home and one ounce in public, but it won't go into effect overnight. The Oregon Liquor Control Commission will have until January 1st, 2016 to implement all the necessary rules and procedures necessary to regulating marijuana in the state. 2016. Yeah, so you got over a year uh, to wait in Oregon before legalization happens. Uh, but in the meantime, I wonder, just because they haven't put in the procedures to regulate marijuana, does that mm. mean that it is still illegal to be caught possessing it? Now well, that that's, that's an interesting question. And the other question is, now that we've voted to, to legalize it, if you do get caught with it, do you have a shot at jury nullification. But That's an excellent question. Would they allow you to even bring up jury nullification in court? Well, not directly. You have to jump th you you have to kind of lay it between the lines of your arguments. So So I, that's good news. Oregon, Alaska both coming on board with marijuana legalization. That's four states. We're almost to 10% uh of the states at this point. Add in Washington. It's amazing. Add in Washington DC now. Mm -hmm. where they also voted for it. In fact, uh, revelers celebrating the passage of Initiative 71, according to ABC News, should hold off on smoking in the streets. It's far from over. You see, any law passed in Washington, D.C., including by ballot initiative, is subject to a congressional review period. And already one member of Congress, Republican Andy Harris of Maryland, has pledged to work to overturn it. And now that the Senate has turned red... Congress can eat more easily overturn the D.C. vote. Pot sellers should also probably lay low for a while. I-71 does not regulate the sale of marijuana, which means it's technically still illegal to sell the weed, even if obtaining it isn't illegal. Another aspect of the measure that the city council might try to fix legislatively. Now, you may recall that earlier this year we made uh, we reported here on Free Talk Live that Washington, D.C.'s city council did pass a pretty serious decrim uh, piece of legislation there. They It went through the city council, and everything that goes through the city council then goes to Congress, and then Congress has to sit on it for like 60 days, I think it was, and then uh, within that 60 days, someone in Congress can move to try to kill what the city council in D.C. passed. It was interesting that no one did. So D.C.'s city council passed, like I think it was decrim of up to an ounce, possession of an ounce. Mm -hmm. And, and that went into effect? It went into effect. So marijuana has been decriminalized as of 2014 uh, in Washington, D.C., but now you've got some, uh, you know, some 
guy who wants to make a name for himself, Andy Harris of Maryland. He's pledging to overturn the voters' decision to fully legalize cannabis in Washington, D.C. So where Mm. this one will end up, we don't know. Unlike Alaska and Colorado, the Washington, D.C. situation isn't really a done deal. Uh, they can they can reverse it. Essentially, the the Congress can reverse this. I wouldn't be surprised to see some lawsuits on these issues too. Although, who would have standing to sue? I don't know. You mean in D.C. or just in general? Um, in general, on the marijuana uh, ballot act, a lot of times things that are passed by ballot issue then uh, suffer uh, attacks in the courts. Uh, that's happened with many of the gay marriage mm-hmm. things. Um, Probably harder to attack uh, the, the cannabis, the cannabis than gay marriage. Minimum wage initiatives were all over different ballots: Arkansas, Alaska, Nebraska, and South Dakota, and they all passed. Uh, they're actually, in fa- point of fact, were uh, they were very popular with voters, and of course, that usually has to do with the fact that people don't know what the minimum wage does to uh, economics. Yeah, I mean, it's been very carefully hidden. You know, economics is a simple thing that's been dangerously obfuscated by people like uh, Keynes. Well, what happens, Rich Paul, when the minimum wage goes up? I mean, people looking at that issue say this is something to support. I mean, who wouldn't want to help people get more money? Well, I mean, uh, according to the laws of economics, if you raise the price of a good, then you will sell less of that good. So if you raise, raise the price of unskilled labor, you will sell less unskilled labor. Less people will be working. But then there's another variable, which is what is the Federal Reserve doing? If the Federal Reserve prints out a bunch of money at the same time the minimum wage goes up, then they've basically devalued the currency and maybe the increase in the middle wa- minimum wage doesn't do anything at all. But if there isn't enough enough inflation, then unemployment goes up. We'll come back with more of the ballot initiatives. You can comment on whatever's on your mind as well. 855-450-FREE. There's more Free Talk Live coming up. Kay Oliver is part of the Toyambe Women's Group in Jinja, Uganda. She gets old clothes, fixes them up, washes them, and then sells them at the Jinja market. She was quite happy with her success at her business, but realized that a sewing machine would really help her make more money to take care of her two kids. Free Talk Live helped her get that sewing machine. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound, try out the subscription, cancel at any time, coffee.freetalklive.com. The event you've been waiting for is here. Lumber Liquidators, third annual fall flooring yard sale. It's your chance to get first quality, full warranty, direct from the mill flooring at unbelievable closeout prices. Like oak laminate for an incredible 19 cents a square foot and pre-finished three-quarter inch solid maple for just $149. Plus beautiful bamboo for 63% less than other stores. Take advantage of our 20 years of savings with 20 month special financing and get even more unheard of flooring deals in our stores. Fall flooring yard sale is Thursday through Monday only. Visit LumberLiquidators.com to find a store near you. Are you tired of your taxes funding endless occupations around the world? Antiwar.com is run by people who understand that wars abroad become wars at home, wars on our freedoms. Antiwar.com is dedicated to bringing you the latest in news, views, interviews, and reviews from the top movers and shakers in the anti-occupation movement. Antiwar.com has it all, from thorough foreign policy analysis to interviews with whistleblowers who used to run the military-industrial complex. Antiwar, pro-free market. That's Antiwar.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Wednesday, November 5th, 2014. Silver is trading at $15.31 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,142 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $339. 
Antiwar.com reports, if you thought the situation in Yemen couldn't possibly be more complicated, you haven't been paying close attention to U.S. foreign policy, which finds a way to insinuate itself at the most inopportune times imaginable. Already being contested by multiple fighting forces, U.S. drones launched multiple attacks near the key Yemeni town of Rada, killing 20 people, all of whom were labeled suspected Al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula has been defending Rada alongside Sunni tribal allies from a recent offense by the Shiite Houthis, who are themselves backed by parts of the Yemeni military. The U.S. drone campaign has long targeted Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, and that's not a surprise. Yet, getting itself so directly involved in a battle between Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula and the Houthis risks being controversial, particularly with the Saudi government openly talking about fighting against the Houthis' expansion in Yemen. Hi, I'm Daryl W. Perry, and I need your help to take Peace, Love, Liberty Radio on the road. During the 104-day trip, I'll be visiting at least 10 cities across the country, speaking to people about the ideas of peace, love, and liberty, while simultaneously continuing to create daily liberty media. To find out more about the tour or to donate, visit tour.fppradio.com. That's T-O-U-R dot F-P-P-Radio.com. The Associated Press reports marijuana activists who have longed for decades to end America's drug war pocketed more victories Tuesday with Oregon and the nation's capital approving recreational cannabis use. The advocates also believe they have another win, too, in Alaska as a legal cannabis measure holds a steady lead. The only major loss for drug law reformers came in Florida, and even there, a medical marijuana proposal earned 58%, just shy of the 60% required to pass. The victories came in a midterm election that saw a low turnout and an electorate that handed Republicans back control of the U.S. Senate for the first time since 2006. The results emboldened marijuana activists as they prepare legalization efforts in California, Massachusetts, Maine, and other states in 2016. Drug war supporter Kevin Sabat called the vote a bit of a wake-up call and pointed to the results in Florida as well as votes in five Colorado cities banning marijuana dispensaries and said, I think we've slowed the legal marijuana freight train. The measures were among many that appeared on ballots, with voters approving ones to raise the minimum wage in four states, passing expanded background checks in Washington state, and rejecting abortion-related measures in two states. In California, drug war opponents welcomed a vote that reduced penalties from felonies to misdemeanors on possession of small amounts of drugs, including cocaine and heroin. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800 874 9760. Reuters reports the U.S. delegation to the United Nations informed members of the Security Council on Tuesday that it will circulate a draft resolution establishing an international sanctions regime for conflict-torn South Sudan. An official speaking on the condition of anonymity said, The resolution will establish a mechanism for targeting individuals undermining South Sudan's political stability and abusing human rights. We believe targeted measures are appropriate at this time to support efforts to establish a peace agreement and cessation of hostilities. He did not say when the draft would be circulated to the 15-nation council and put to a vote. Australian UN Ambassador Gary Quinlan, president of the Security Council this month, also declined to comment on the likely timing of any sanctions move, but he told reporters his country and several other council members supported the idea of making an arms embargo part of any South Sudan sanctions regime. South Sudan President Salva Kiir and rebel leader Rayak Makar must continue to engage in peace talks. The official said that establishing a UN sanctions regime would demonstrate the world's resolve in bringing an end to the civil war. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com.
A hot new murder craze sweeps Chicago. Things that shouldn't be said in modern society are said 1,400 times at the RNC, and a brave woman enters a restaurant without first looking it up online. This is the Onion Week in Review. The World Wildlife Fund quickly backtracked Thursday from a recently released press statement saying panda ears are, quote, absolutely delicious. Organization officials noted that while panda ears do taste amazing braised, steamed, fried, or cooked in an omelet, they should not have announced it publicly, nor should they have ever eaten any part of a cheetah, giraffe, or Bengal tiger, no matter how good they may be. According to company sources, the Netflix board of directors held a tense series of meetings earlier this morning to decide whether the fantasy comedy Michael is streamworthy. The board reportedly sat through its mandatory two back-to-back -back screenings of the 1996 film starring John Travolta as an angel visiting Earth, all while passionately arguing over the film's story, acting, and level of enjoyment upon subsequent viewings to determine if the movie should be available through its instant viewing program. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything you want right here, toll free at 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. Doing an election or post election recap here. We've talked about some of the uh, ballot initiatives, uh, some that had been a success, like legalizing cannabis in Alaska and Oregon, and then the semi success in Washington, D.C., where Voters did vote to legalize cannabis, but now Congress gets to take a swing at it, so we don't know what's going to happen there. In Florida, cannabis uh, medical cannabis loses by just 2%, with 58% voting for it. They needed 60%. The Actually, the person who put together that campaign called in in the first hour of the show, and uh, that was an interesting discussion. They spent $4 million on that campaign. Just trying to imagine what $4 million could do for the liberty movement up here in New Hampshire. And, of course, that's kind of what we've come back to time and time again here on Free Talk Live is how in New Hampshire so much more is possible. I wrote an article over at freekeen.com today about how at least 15 candidates who are Free State Project participants, or at least who are alleged to be Free State Project participants, won uh, in the elections yesterday here in New Hampshire, some are saying uh, that, and by the way, Rich Paul is with me here tonight. Some are saying that there are as many as 20 free staters who've won. Now, I looked at the list, and the list was provided by, uh, they found the list over at the uh, Granite State Progress site for what they call the Free State Project Watch. Granite State Progress is not a liberty friendly organization. They are an organization who loves big government and they want more government in our lives. And so, thankfully, they have taken the time to do some research, and they have tried to determine who all of the free staters are on the ballots across New Hampshire yesterday. They came up with something like 40 names, and they uh, they had on this list, they had what they called honorary free staters, people who aren't actually free state project participants, but whose names have been sort of seen around the free state project circles. And so they've, you know, kind of come to the conclusion that they're free stater friendlies, I guess. Mm -hmm. And so they listed them and then they listed uh, mostly people. The, the list was the super majority people they alleged were free staters. I didn't know all the names on the list, so I can't verify that all the names they have found are free staters. So going by what they say are free staters, mm -hmm. according to their own list, at least 15 people who they claim are free staters were elected to state representative seats across New Hampshire yesterday. It was an amazingly successful day for the ideas of freedom. And thanks to Granite State Progress for doing the research and saving us the trouble. Absolutely. Uh, I, I really appreciate it, guys, because, you know, I wanted to compile that list and I didn't have the time and energy. Me neither. I mean, I was so busy last night. It was really, uh, I, I was really grateful that they took the time to do that. And I hope they continue because I know they've created a new organization called Free State Project Watch. And so mm -hmm. this is what they're going to do. This is, they, they are committed to this, uh, Rich, from what it's, you know, from their website. They've even come up mm -hmm. with graphics. There's a, uh, there's a graphic of a, a like a wolf in sheep's clothing, kind of staring evilly at the you know the <laughs> the camera. And then uh, let me actually pull this up here because I got one of the the hit piece flyers that this organization sent out. On one side of the flyer, the so it's a trifold that was folded up and then you know sent in the mail. 
apparently to registered undeclared voters, so people who are not registered as either Republican or Democrat, they received hit piece flyers against Free State Project participants running for office. And so on one side of this this flyer, it says, Beware your candidates. Not everyone is who they appear to be. And then in the middle there is this wolf with sheep <laughs> with a sheepskin on top of it. And uh, the flyer itself is uh, just an attack, an all-out attack on the Free State Project. And then on the left-hand side of the flyer, it, it kind of profiles the candidates. So one of the candidates who actually didn't win, unfortunately, Andre Rosa uh, in uh, Manchester, was one of the people that they attacked. But the attack hmm. flyer didn't necessarily hurt the candidates who uh, who won or lost. I'm, I'm sure the people in Granite State Progress would like to believe that they did. But according to a conversation that I had, one of the candidates, when they were talking with, with voters— uh, apparently, you know, outside of the polls, uh, related a story that when they were out there, they uh, they reported that apparently, when they re- one of the one of the candidates asked the individual who was coming out or multiple people, I guess, you know, hey, did you get my flyer? And the the response was, oh, you mean the trifold? And the candidate said, well, no, 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 my my flyer wasn't a trifold. That was the hit piece against me. And the mm-hmm. person voting for them said, well, that was the reason I voted for you. <laughs> so there's no doubt that these hit piece flyers actually do accomplish the task of informing people about the free staters in their area. Thing is, in New Hampshire, a lot of people like free staters. Yeah, and I'm, su- <laughs> I'm very surprised by their analysis because – you know, you would think you would want to to warn the diehard party base that maybe the candidates running in your party are not um, what what you're expecting them to be. But the mm-hmm. the independents, it seems, are the most uh, friendly to us because. Mm-hmm. You know, they've gotten beyond the whole illusion that there's a difference between. Uh, you know, Obama and Mo- McCain or Obama and Rob and Romney. So I, I would, f- if I was them, I would fire their analyst. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or no, keep them on board, actually. Well, if being me, I hope right, they keep yeah. them on board. <laughs> But you can expect more of this, Rich. I mean, as uh, as more free staters pour into New Hampshire, the establishment, as it is, will freak out. They'll continue to do desperate things like spend thousands of dollars on hit piece flyers. I mean, I don't know what it costs to mail a bunch of flyers, thousands of flyers to people's homes, mm-hmm. but I don't imagine it's a cheap thing to do. Uh, you know, you're probably talking about a couple grand at least to you know throw these put these flyers out there. And yeah. and I wonder how many people Googled the Free State Project as a result of this. Good question. And said, wow, I really agree with some of the things that they say. So yeah. the hit piece flyer here uh, says, State House candidate Andre Rosa moved to New Hampshire as a member of the ultra-extreme Free State Project. Are we ultra-extreme ultra, now? Ex- not just extreme, but ultra We've upgraded. Extreme. In 2003, the Free State Project voted on a state to move 20,000 people to with the stated purpose to take over state government and dismantle it. That last part is underlined for emphasis. Point uh, Next bullet point, New Hampshire was the unlucky, unlucky recipient of that vote. Bullet point three, the state Free State Project <laughs> seeks to create a libertarian utopia, with quotes, void of public infrastructure and common laws, and to use the power of numbers to dramatically change New Hampshire, even threatening secession from the rest of the country. Yeehaw! Free State Project. Now remember, Andre Rosa did not win, but there was another candidate who received the his the voters in his district received these very same flyers, and he won. <laughs> so there's no consistency. You know, they can't say one way or the other if their flyers actually affected anything. It was Andre's first campaign, and you know, your first time out the gate, the odds mm. are good you're not going to win. Going on, uh, Free State Project members sign a pledge to move to New Hampshire and work to change the way of life in our state. Candidate Andra Rosa is a member of the Free State Project and moved to New Hampshire to help achieve those goals. Free staters are doing real damage in the state house, but your vote could change that on Tuesday, November 4th. And then they go on on the left-hand side to talk more about Andre saying that he moved here from Southern California as a part of the Free State Project. He's a very act member with the Free State Project, and the group has even promoted Rosa's business ventures through their official newsletter. 
Last year, Rosa was arrested by police. By the way, his business venture they're talking about was mm-hmm. the calendar that he made of drag queens and covered bridges. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's the that business venture. Interesting. I've never seen a counter- calendar like that before. It's a one of a kind, that's for sure. Last year, Rosa, Rosa was arrested by police in Hooksett for continuing to drive after having his license suspended, which, <sighs> by the way, is something that happens to a lot of people in New Hampshire. Yeah, it's uh, one of the things we have to work on is they take uh, driving offenses a little overly seriously up here. It definitely needs to change, but the fact that a lot of people have been arrested for that particular offense means that a lot of people know someone who's been arrested for that offense, and that means that saying that this political candidate has been arrested for that just makes him more like the people reading the flyer. It's true. The toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. The Free Staters, they say in the flyer, often refer to these as victimless crimes, with quotes around it, and claim they should be overlooked. Does New Hampshire want out-of-state activists who flaunt our laws making our laws? Asks the flyer. Mm -hmm. It's Free Talk Live. 855-450-FREE. You take control. Do you live with stress? If you have nervousness or common everyday anxiety, we're looking for you. Because right now we're sending risk-free supplies of a fast-acting supplement to listeners of this station. You heard right. Every listener who calls right now will learn how to get a risk-free bottle of Stress Block, a naturally derived formula that promotes feelings of calmness, alertness, and focus in just moments. Supplies for this risk-free offer are limited, so don't wait. Stress Block is a fast-acting, non-prescription formula to support relaxation without causing drowsiness. Your nervousness is guaranteed to begin fading like magic in just minutes. This special risk-free offer is for listeners of this station, but it won't last. Call us now for this exclusive Stress Block risk-free offer. To get your risk-free supply of Stress Block, call 1-800-481-1288. That's 1-800-481-1288. 1-800-481-1288. Making the right decisions is a challenge to investors. Are we going to see economic growth, slide into a recession, or at worst, depression? Hi, Ted Anderson from Midas Resources. We all know when a company acts irresponsibly, divesting ourselves in a move towards safety is prudent. When the market becomes volatile, U.S. Treasuries are a safe haven. But what do you do when the U.S. government overextends itself and spends beyond its means? Many investors are turning toward gold as a common-sense alternative to traditional pay paper investments. Midas Resources has put together a powerful book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, discussing costs, benefits, risks, featuring full-color illustrations, weights, and measures. The book is free and can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. Paper investments are dwarfed by gold's 6,000-year history. Discover how gold may be right for you and your IRA by calling 800-686-2237. Whether buying or it's time for you to sell, the book is free. Call 800 800- 686-2237. Attention. Have you been in a serious automobile accident? Then you need to call our attorneys now. We specialize in helping our clients get compensated for major auto injuries. If you've been in any type of car or motorcycle accident and you've been seriously injured, you may be entitled to significant financial compensation. Our attorneys have recovered millions and millions of dollars for injured clients. There are no out-of-pocket costs to you ever. We only receive a fee when we win your case. We are available 24-7. If you've been in an accident and been seriously injured, make this free call to our attorneys attorneys now. Call the Personal Injury Center at 800-648-9173. 800-648-9173. 800-648-9173. That's 800-648-9173. This ad is paid for by participating member law firms. We are not an attorney referral service. Representation may not be So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. 
Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. You're invited to take control of the airwaves. Toll free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You may also join us via Skype at username lrn.fm. With you in the studio, you have Ian here. And Rich Paul. Coffee.freetalklive.com is where you can go to get a free pound of some of the best coffee out there from BuzzBox. It's 100% organic, top 1% grade Arabica, and shade grown. Plus, not only is BuzzBox competitively priced with other high-end coffees, but they do something special uh, with Free Talk Live and with Kiva.org that is something you're not going to find in other coffee dealers. Uh, what happens is we can help change lives by offering people in poverty an opportunity to make wealth for themselves, to make a better life for themselves by giving micro loans out. And the way we can finance these micro loans is every 10 listeners like you that signs up at coffee.freetalklive.com and you get on the auto ship program, you get that first month free, just pay the shipping cost. When uh, 10 listeners sign up, that funds one new micro loan. So for every 10 listeners, we can fund one micro loan and, uh, and thereby uh, help make people's lives better around the world. When they pay off their micro loan, we'll take the money back in and loan it back out again to somebody else. So it's a great way to help people and get some great coffee all at the same time. You can go and get started now and get your free pound today at coffee.freetalklive.com. Again, you just pay the shipping cost. It gets sent right to you. And you can cancel your subscription at any time. That's coffee.freetalklive.com. Jimmy is in Arizona. You're on Free Talk Live. Hey, Jimmy. Hey, how y'all doing? Go ahead with your thoughts, Jimmy. Doing good. Oh, good. Hey, Rich Paul. I think that's the first time I talked to you. Uh, hey, uh, so I want to talk about that cat call, that girl, you know, we all, you know, that story that's going around. You talking about the video with the, for the girl in New York who walked around for 10 hours and there's two minutes of people saying good morning to her and that supposedly is offensive? Yeah, I think she's lying. I don't, um, but here's the thing. I went and I did my own test around <laughs> Tucson. Oh yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I put on a black dress. Uh, no, yeah, I walked around for 10 hours. Uh, nobody said nothing to me. Really? That's kind of a shock. Right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you'd think a man yeah. walking around in a dress for 10 hours would at least get one compliment. Yeah, or they, they were just, they were disgusted. Some people puked, and I don't know what their problem was, but they didn't say hi Wait to me. Now, why would somebody, now, why would somebody puke as a result of you being in a black dress? I mean, is there something you're not telling us, Jimmy, about what else you were wearing or... You know, was there something well, I, that was particularly he, gross about the dress? Are you kind of I guess gross? They said, I, I got a pretty hair back, and uh, that disgusted <laughs> some people. Oh, so it was one of those uh, dresses where, um, like, it was a like a bare back kind of dress thing. See, yeah, I think I, you might I, need I, a fashion consultant. You don't want to wear those with a hairy back. No, it's a bad idea. Well, I, I did my research. I wore a strapless bra, you know, so that way no one could see nothing. And, uh, but yeah, no compliments and I'm upset. So That's I think, shame. you know, I don't know. Yeah, it is. I love y'all. Rich Paul. Glad you're out of jail. Thanks, Thanks Jimmy, man. for the call tonight. Appreciate it. Toll free number 855-450-FREE. So, uh, let's see. Ballot initiatives. I don't know if there's much else to say here. The ABC News story goes over the marijuana ones, which, as you know, if you've been listening tonight, Alaska and Oregon passed marijuana legalization. Washington, D.C. passed it, but it could be batted back by Congress. That one has yet to really pan out. Uh, We'll let you know as we know more about that. The minimum wage increased in Arkansas, Alaska, Nebraska, and South Dakota. Fifth state, Illinois, also passed a minimum wage ballot, but that was only a way for voters to express their personal preference and was non-binding. Of course, we touched on this earlier, Rich Paul, in that uh, you pointed out that the economics of this just doesn't work out. Uh, When you increase costs for a business, they have to make those costs up somewhere. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to increase the minimum wage, then there's only so many things that a business owner can do to deal with that. Mm-hmm. They can uh, they can increase the cost of the price of the product. 
you know, yeah. whatever it is that they're selling or the service that they're selling. But that, of course, makes them less competitive in the marketplace where they're competing maybe against mm-hmm. international companies or whatever who might be able to make the same or similar product for a lower price. You and if those companies thought they could increase profit by raising prices, they'd have done it already without waiting for the minimum wage to rise. Right, but they can't because they're competing, so they've got to keep prices down. Competition mm-hmm. pushes prices down in general. Um, so they could increase the price of the product, but that's not something you really want to do. You can also lower the quality of the product. So if the product is made with good quality parts or, you know, good quality wood or something, you could replace it with balsa wood or, you know, particle board or some crappy mm-hmm. version of what it used to be. Make the product into a shadow of its former self as far as its quality is concerned. So that way you can keep the price of the product the same. But the cost of the product, you've managed to lower to the point where you can make up the difference that you have to pay the employees more. That's something you can do. But then Mm -hmm. you're debasing the quality of your product. And if you're in a competitive marketplace, that's also something that is not an ideal choice. Another thing you can do, and this is probably the more common choice for a business owner, is to just load up your existing employees with more responsibilities. You know, you've already Mm -hmm. got existing employees. Now you've got to pay them more money. You were going to hire somebody new to take on the uh, the responsibilities that your employees, you know, can't ha- all handle. But no, nope, now you can't afford to hire somebody new because you've got to give raises to everybody else. So you just give them more. Just make sure they do all the responsibilities amongst them of whatever that new employee would have done, and then you can absorb the costs. And of course, that's going to upset your employees. They're not mm-hmm. going to appreciate being saddled with more job tasks, and uh, you know, at the same time, they might. And they may not even be getting a pay increase because if your employees have been there for a while, let's say they're making ten dollars an hour, uh, and the minimum wage was seven something, and now the minimum wage has raised to eight fifty. Well, the employees who are making ten dollars an hour are not likely to get a raise after the minimum wage goes up, but they mm-hmm. will possibly get more responsibilities for the job, and so that's going to upset them. That's going to, you know, turn them against the boss. It's going to turn them against you if you're the business owner. So mm-hmm. none of these options are are very uh, desirable. And then, of course, there are the even more serious options, which is some businesses that are barely staying in business and don't have any margin are going to cease to exist and cease to employ anybody. Other yeah. businesses will lay people off and replace them with machines. That's and correct. I especially expect that to be happening to McDonald's cashiers. They're doing it already, aren't they? They've got the cashier machines. Well, they're testing those things out in preparation for minimum mm-hmm. wage hikes. And uh, I would think people would have, you know, seen the writing on on that wall. And the other option is uh, if you can move your employees, this doesn't work if you're uh, running a McDonald's, but if you're manufacturing something, then move your operations out of the United States. That's your other option with a high minimum wage. So, yeah, you're right. I mean, people could lose their jobs entirely. Mm -hmm. Mom-and-pop businesses that are on the edge could go out of business entirely as a result Mm -hmm. of this minimum wage. And is that what you wanted? I mean, for those of you who wanted the minimum wage increase, we must have lots of listeners listening to us right now who would have voted for this or actually did vote for this. I mean, there were Mm -hmm. several states where this was on the ballot, and they all passed. So, you know, this is a fairly popular thing. Did you really imagine when you were voting for the minimum wage, if you voted for the increase, did you imagine that what you've just done was helping put people out of a job? Because Mm -hmm. that was, you know, you wanted to help people with a job. That was the intention, right? That's what Mm -hmm. you thought. You thought you were going to help somebody who's, they're having a tough time. They're living in, you know, kind of the uh, the back end of life and they don't have the the best job in the world. And who wouldn't want to make make $10 an hour instead of $7 an hour? I mean, you know, Mm -hmm. on its face, it seems like a desirable thing. But just think about it a little bit further and try to realize the consequences of what you're doing. You can't make value out of thin air by demanding that someone get paid more for the same task. Yeah, I mean, if you find yourself tempted to vote in favor of a minimum wage, I would say ask yourself, why don't we raise it to 50 bucks and make everybody rich? Excellent question. It's Free Talk Live. With autumn in the air, it's time to think about getting ready for winter. And it's time to save at HerbalHealer.com. You'll find amazing seasonal savings to prepare you for the fight against cold and flu season. Like Oregacillin to promote lung health. 30 capsules regularly $34.95, now only $25. 
HHA Olive Leaf, the natural antiviral, normally $16.95 now. 60 capsules are just $12. HHA Elderberry Power, a great flu and virus fighter, regularly $16.95, 60 capsules, now $10. Save on all our homeopathic detoxes. Choose from lungs, kidney, liver, brain, libido, or whole body, normally $26.95, now just $20. Visit HerbalHealer.com and click on the Fall Winter Specials button to save on all our natural cold and flu fighting products. Also explore our Herbal Healer Academy correspondence courses that teach you how to handle your health naturally. HerbalHealer.com, healing the world with nature, one person at a time, since 1988. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on to join the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, dial in, bring up anything you want here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Liberty-minded folks in a lot of places are pretty burned out right about now. And if you're feeling that burnout, then you really need to look at the Free State Project as your best chance at achieving liberty in your lifetime. We can talk more about that here in a little bit as we continue some more election recap here. Of course, you can also bring up whatever's on your mind at 855-450-FREE. Uh, and you can join us on our website at freetalklive.com. Now, you can, of course, if you're starting a business up, Go and incorporate at LegalZoom.com. It can help protect you against frivolous lawsuits that can wipe you out. LegalZoom.com is fast and easy, and they've got all kinds of legal documents like patents, wills, and trademarks. Use code FTL, and you'll save $10 off your order. That's LegalZoom.com. 
Again, our toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. So I've been through the list of ballot measures and uh, that ABC News was providing. It's not a complete list by any means. So if there's something that we missed that you thought was particularly interesting that we should share, feel free to get on the phones or call us via Skype at Skype username lrn.fm. And, uh, of course, the big news for, for me tonight, or, yep, yeah, last night, the big news was New Hampshire all the way. Now, of course, this isn't going to get the play that the Republicans have taken the Senate and the House or whatever. That's what's getting the, the news headlines. But there was a neat uh, quote, and you know what? I should have kept it pulled up on my screen, but apparently Ron Paul uh, sent out a couple of tweets where he talked about, uh, in one of the tweets, he says, power change, yes. Ideology change, no. As far as like you know, <laughs> the news out of D.C., nothing's going to change ultimately. If anything, as he pointed out in his second tweet, uh, which is it's kind of cool seeing Ron Paul tweeting things. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, as he pointed out in his second tweet, if anything changes, it'll mean that there's going to be more warmongering now. Now that the Republicans are in charge, they can send you know more troops in. They can send troops into Syria and Iraq. Which you know the uh, Barack Obama supposedly wasn't going to do, but uh, we thought that he was likely going to anyway, and now it's probably even more likely that it will happen. Politically, I I don't think they're going to do that because the president always gets blamed for foreign policy, so mm -hmm. they're you know they're probably not going to make it to give him any more power, even if it's power to do things that they want him to do on, you know, for the risks that Obama will make himself look good. Hmm. You may be right about that, but uh, I don't know. I guess I think Ron Paul certainly got his finger on the pulse of uh, D.C. better than anybody does up here in, in New Hampshire. I'll That's go with, true. I'll go with Ron Paul on his prediction on that one. I mean, I hope he's wrong. I hope that we don't see more troops going into foreign countries now that the Republicans are in, but... Certainly, if they have their druthers, they uh, they may very well make that happen. So your thoughts are welcome here at 855-450-FREE. The big news, though, as I posted over at freekeen.com, is the fact that free staters have increased their take of the state house from 11 to 15, to at least 15. Yeah, yeah it's, it's an amazing I thing. I can't tell you how happy that makes me. I am just... So excited about that! Oh, it's 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 absolutely amazing. It's I mean I'm elated to see this news. It would be wonderful to just know one person who was elected to a state house in any state, which you know most people don't know these people. They're politicians and they're scumbags. And in New Hampshire, that's not necessarily the case. In New Hampshire, a lot of these people are our neighbors and free staters, liberty-minded folks who've moved here to get active for liberty. They're getting elected, and that doesn't happen with the Libertarians anywhere else. Now, yeah, it's true that some of the candidates lost. Okay, there were dozens of candidates running, and over a dozen won. But some did lose, but that's okay. It's not like you can win them all. The fact that there are any wins whatsoever from people who would personally describe themselves as voluntarists or even anarchists mm -hmm. in political contests is something that it's so hard to overstate the importance of what this is. Yeah, and it's it's just exciting. I mean, I, re I remember just being at the state house for some protest, and, you know, one of the legislators comes out, and uh, he and I stood there and smoked a bowl while they were inside uh, <laughs> debating, and I just thought, this is really cool. I'm standing here smoking a bowl with a, with state, a, state, legislator. With a state rep on the state of the on the steps of the legislature. That was at That's 420 nice. this year, right? Um, well, oh, well, we also had a legislator uh, come out to the 420 rally. but Who, but by the way, was reelected. Sweet. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations, Michael Sylvia. How many states uh, does this happen where, where not only does a state rep smoke cannabis publicly, is photographed doing it, Posted mm -hmm. publicly to freekeen.com this photo of him smoke toking on a on a joint mm -hmm. out in front of the state house. Not only has this <laughs> happened, but that same guy gets re-elected and cannabis is still illegal here. It's not like he was, you know, in uh, Colorado or something like mm -hmm. that, uh, where it's legal. No, it it was still a criminal act for him to do that. Eat and your he heart did out, Marion Barry. Yeah, it's pretty uh, <laughs> For those that don't know, that's a reference to the crack-smoking ex-mayor of uh, D.C. Wait, didn't he get re-elected to uh, Alderman? Yes, he did get re-elected, too. <laughs> is, he, is he Alderman now, or is he mayor again there? 
I don't know, but I know he's been elected to public office yeah, again. Yeah, after the crack smoking thing. So uh, so that was amazing. So multiple liberty activists were reelected. Incumbents mm. were reelected. Some were not. Um, some also said they were done. You know, they wanted to focus on their businesses. So there's a new batch of people in there. Some some of the same. Some new uh, new folks are coming in, which is great. Mm. Uh, new faces, new ideas. There'd be new uh, you know, legislation put forth. Some of the bad people in New Hampshire, the people who are not liberty oriented, didn't win. Mm. Right. So that's a good thing. Did and Chase win? She did. Now, this okay. is the lady who made headlines for saying that free staters are the single greatest threat to the state. She won, but only by about 80 or 60 or 80 votes. So it wasn't a uh, it wow. wasn't a landslide for her. And that's in Keene, which is a Democratic stronghold. She was up against a Republican who wasn't really a liberty guy. He was just more of a Republican. Uh, mm -hmm. But, you know, even she isn't uh, she's not a guarantee for the future, I guess. I guess you could say on that. Wow. So 15. I'd like to become the single di biggest danger to her reelection. <laughs> you would have to move to a different part of Keene because she is in a different section of the city. Okay. But nonetheless, uh, there's there's all kinds of opportunity here. I mean, we're just scratching the surface for all the people out there who are grousing and moaning and bitching about what just happened wherever it is that you live. Look no further than New Hampshire. Go ahead. Try to find something else. That's equivalent to what we've got going on here. I mean, I, I don't feel like it's chest thumping to point out that this is working, that this yeah. is happening. It's it's working and it's wonderful that people can step down. Liberty people can step down and somebody else can step in after them because, yeah. you know, it's like with Ron Paul. Ron Paul was 72 and we knew he wasn't going to run again. And it's like, who do we get to carry the torch? Well, in New well, Hampshire, there's lots of people to step up, at least for the lower offices, right. and carry the torch when you're tired and you say, okay, I don't want to run for office anymore. And it only takes two years, by the way, before you can run as a state rep. So you mm -hmm. make the move to New Hampshire as part of the Free State Project. Go to freestateproject.org, get signed up, start planning your move. Don't don't wait till 20000 I mean, there are people who are waiting till 20000 I think mm -hmm. they should start planning their move as soon as possible and not wait. The idea behind the Free State Project is to sign up 20,000 people. There are over 16,000 signed already who mm -hmm. pledged to move to New Hampshire. Once 20,000 is reached, there's a five-year window of time where they have to move here and then get active. So once you actually make that move, it's only two years later when you can run for state rep. Mm -hmm. And in fact, if you want to run for city council right out, uh, right out the gate, you can. So mm -hmm. you can just move, and then the next day you can run for city council. in Or New for Hampshire. sheriff or all sorts of other things. Exactly. So there's real opportunity here. And in order to, uh, to, like, to file for state office, you're talking about $2. Mm -hmm. It's two years you have to wait, and then $2 to file as a Republican or Democrat, which is why the Libertarians hardly ever file in New Hampshire, because they have to get like 150 petition signatures and there's a lot more effort that has to be put in to getting them on the ballot but if you just want to get your name on the ballot as a republican or democrat two bucks no yep. find another place in the country with ballot access requirements like that i don't think they exist i'd be i mean again i'd love to be proven wrong but i don't think yeah. that there's any other place like this they're a lot harsher in michigan 855 450 free you can take control here this is free talk live the remaining moments are next but there's enough time for you Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. TalkLive.com. Hi, folks. Ronnie McMullen here for Life Change Tea. Healthcare is a problem. Whether you're for or against Obamacare, it's a mess. 
My question is, who do you trust? Do you want to be told what to do, or do you want to make your own decision? My opinion, preventative maintenance. Keeping your colon clean is preventative maintenance. A little exercise, a balanced diet, and drinking Life Change Tea. It tastes great, and it helps with constipation, high cholesterol, liver problems, acid reflux, and much, much more. And with the holiday season upon us, you can get some extra tea for free. Don't wait for Obama. Make your own decision. Order now. Call us at 928-308-0408. That's 928-308-0408. Or you can log on to getthetea.com. That's getthetea.com. Ridding yourself of harmful toxins is truly preventative maintenance. Getthetea.com. This is the Onion Week in Review. Allentown, Pennsylvania, five-year-old Trisha Billings announced from her dining room Saturday that the circle was no longer her favorite shape. The landmark declaration comes just days after the five-year-old changed her favorite color from red to purple. While experts have struggled to determine what Billings' interim favorite shape will be, the five-year-old assured reporters that the majority of her favorite things will remain consistent for the time being. Disney executives revealed in an interview Friday that all of the company's animated and live-action movies take place in a single unified universe. Universe, saying Never Never Land is actually mere minutes away from the jungle where Timon, Pumbaa, and Simba danced in a straight line and sang Hakuna Matata, company heads stated that every character from Air Bud to Jiminy Cricket all inhabit the same interconnected world just as Walt Disney envisioned it. A lot of people don't know this, but Daryl Hannah's character in Splash actually lives in the exact same coral reef where Nemo went missing. And if filmmakers so desired, uh, they could have Princess Jasmine, for example, hop into Herbie Fully Loaded to go watch the Jonas Brothers 3D concert experience. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. It's Free Talk Live. Moments remain, but there's enough time for you if you dial in right now. 855-450-FREE is the number brought to you by ProXPN. That's 855 855- Four five zero three seven three three. We've got Skype. Skype on into the show. Our username there is lrn.fm. Joining you in the studio tonight, it's Ian here. And Rich Paul. And don't forget, you can join us online at freetalklive.com. And if you like the show and you like what we're doing on Free Talk Live, then please consider becoming a Free Talk Live amplifier. The AMP program, AMP stands for AMP, uh, Advertise, Market, and Promote. And the idea is that five bucks a month will invest into Free Talk Live and get on more radio stations, uh, bring more internet listeners on board, and expose new people to the ideas of freedom. So if you value these concepts and you want more people to hear them, that is one of the pr- uh, Free Talk Live's primary missions, is to spread these ideas as far and as wide as possible. And you can help make that happen on radio. Uh, we can advertise to more internet listeners. We can buy more satellite time around the world and expose new ears to the ideas of liberty. Let's go to your calls and thoughts. Uh, again, if you want to join the AMP program, please go to amp.freetalklive.com. John is with us in Charleston, West Virginia, listening to WVTS. Hello, John. Hey, man. Uh, I think it's irresponsible for uh, Republicans to go straight into a war right off of their victory here. <laughs> well, that is the greatest predictor that that's what they'll do because they <laughs> love doing irresponsible things. Right, it's not like they have to put their butts on the line. Oh, uh, I mean, Obama's kind of messed up the military. He's he's done he's he's made a a, a political thing 
instead of a military thing. And I, I think our military— Well, the military's always been uh, political. We, what, what makes you think that Obama changed anything there? Uh, if you listen to Michael Savage, he's got a lot of great talk. Well, I would definitely not be listening to Michael Savage. So what makes you think? Not what Michael Savage thinks, but what makes you think that the military has been uh, somehow turned political by Obama? I, I really don't have all the talking points in my head. Um, I don't write it down. So you're like basically that. just uh, parroting what uh, Michael Savage said. No, no. Uh, actually, I was going to just say that and then move on to something else. But I see. Well, let's uh, point out, though, real I quickly see. here that the, that's essentially the military is a political tool. That That's basically what they are. They're, uh, you know, a large enforcement apparatus for the federal government to utilize in pretty much any way they want to, uh, to make people do the things they want them to do around the world, which are almost always political. So I by definition. I agree with that to some point. Uh we have a lot of inactive military bases and uh, what do you call those things? Huh? Uh, embassies. Embassies. Oh, embassies. We okay. have a lot of embassies every, everywhere, all throughout the world. We're like the world police here in America, and it's draining our budget. That much I agree with you. Not only is it draining your budget, but uh, it's also draining the lives of human beings around the world. And that, to me, yeah. is the greater concern. <laughs> mm. Uh, I think ISIS, I mean, I, I think that's a war that we fight. You know? I no, mean, I don't fight uh, war. I'm kind of a, a peacenik. I'm not really interested in uh, in fighting. Rich Paul, you're not much of a fighter, it seems, at least. I mean, um, I mean, I will up for fight the in defense. The thing about ISIS is ISIS is, you know, apparently very intent on uh, establishing some area to rule in Libya and in Iraq, uh, right. There's no indication that there. I mean, I haven't seen any of any ISIS columns moving across the United <laughs> States. So until they, if they come here and start trying to impose Sharia law, then I, like a lot of my friends, will be you know hiding behind a tree with a rifle. But as right. long well, as they're doing I mean, what they're doing outside, outside the United the States, it's not my I, problem. Sorry, John, you were talking over top of Rich there. Can you try that again? We were talking about religion the other day and how it's used to oppress people. I think ISIS is the perfect example of that. Only other time I would point out is like the Middle Ages and uh, the torture of Christians and all that stuff. And also, well, what about the, the Christians itself. who run the military? I mean, there's plenty of Christians yeah. there. Well, you can also point to the uh, torture of Muslims and Jews during the Inquisition. So, I mean, there's been a lot of religious violence going on. Right, right. John, thanks for your call tonight, man. I appreciate it. Toll-free number is 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. Uh, so we were talking about the Free State Project, the amazing success story. It's it's kind of, you know, it's all coming in at once here, Rich Paul. We've got the 101 Reasons to Move to New Hampshire, the movie. It's coming out in five days. The trailer just hit today. I would posted that on our Facebook earlier this afternoon, and you can access that by going to news dot freetalklive.com so there's this movie that's going to be coming out advertising how great new hampshire is at the same time we've got this news about how over a dozen 15 at least maybe even 20 people <laughs> were elected as free state project participants to the uh, to the state house further than that we've got a, like something like a hundred some people are saying a hundred liberty leaning state reps now in the state house in new hampshire you've got all that news happening in it's all happening now, plus Robin Hood case is still making headlines. I mean, mm -hmm. there's is there any doubt now in anyone who's listening's mind that New Hampshire is the center for liberty activism, that this is the most exciting place to be for people who care about freedom? How anyone could doubt that at this point would just show that they're not paying attention. I, I don't know how they can miss it. I mean, I saw the thing that got me up here was I saw a video of a real ID rally at the state house. I remember just that. People were out there rallying on on the steps of the state state house and they were wearing their firearms. And I literally teared up to see that because I didn't think that was possible oh, that's anywhere in America. And I said, oh, my God, I've got to be there. That's funny because I saw the same video you're talking about. I hadn't yet moved at that point. 
although I had already decided I was going to. I was a Free State Project participant by then, and so I was just mm -hmm. watching the videos to see what was going on in New Hampshire. And so you and I observed two different things. You observed people carrying their firearms openly. I observed amazing uh, level of, I guess, street theater because Lauren Canario and Jim Johnson had, I think we're talking about the same video, where they're out in front of the state house. There's a large protest going on, and they had set up a Nazi-style checkpoint. And they had, like, you know, like, goose-stepping kind of boots on, uh, and they had Nazi-looking, Nazi-esque uniforms, and they had, like, this little checkpoint hut thing that they'd brought out there and they were you know halting people and d demanding that they show their real id and they were really <laughs> having a lot really having a lot of fun uh with the issue and i just thought wow i would love to be in a place where libertarians do something else besides run a political campaign once every four years yeah or you know where you're you're having a protest and you have you know hundreds of people out into instead of 10 people out mm -hmm. swinging signs that that's another thing um but i don't i don't remember seeing Lauren canario in oh, that video that but it video? was a long time ago maybe it was oh, a different yeah. video of the same event it may have been i mean that's one of the other things that happens here there's so many uh people that are activists with video cameras it's not uncommon to get two three four angles on the same uh, the same event yeah well cool. i'm just used to having the next great thing coming too that was the other you were talking about, you know, living in, in New Hampshire. And for me, the great thing is, you know, there's a thing that's going on right now that you've heard about. Yeah. But there are half a dozen things in the works in New Hampshire, and I don't know what they are and I don't know where they are. But when the time comes, I know that more people are going to be popping up and saying, this is what we're doing for liberty. This is what we're doing for liberty. There's always something else coming. Yeah. And it's usually not somebody who's done a lot of things before. Usually it's somebody who just comes out of left field and does something completely unexpected. So I'm really glad not to be missing it. No doubt. And uh, and when those things do happen, they attract new people here, right? So your activism that you've done, whether it be the 420 celebrations or standing up against the criminal charges they hit you with for selling cannabis, these are actions mm. that you t that you made, that, you know, stands that you took that have attracted people here who otherwise may not have gotten wind of the Free State Project. If all the Free State Project was was a bunch of political success, then it wouldn't attract as wide of a variety of people here who are willing to try different things. You know, the civil disobedience of uh, Derek J's victimless crime spree or my civil disobedience or some of the civil disobedience that happened before I came here. That's all been a big attractor uh, here to New Hampshire for, for some people. And uh, it's exciting to meet the kind of people that are coming here who are looking to do more than just run a political campaign. That, not that there's anything mm -hmm. wrong with running political campaigns. That's happening here, and it's working here. Mm -hmm. But the fact that we also have all these other exciting things going on at the same time really creates a robust movement of fascinating things that people are going to want to be a part of. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I'm grateful for it, too. There's always something going on. Go to freestateproject.org, learn more about that, get signed up. Now's the time. You're feeling burnt out. You're sick and tired of uh, how pointless being an activist seems wherever it is that you live. Or maybe you've never done activism before. Don't bother where you are. Just come here. We'll show you the ropes. Uh, so, yeah, check that out. Your life is yours. Take it back. Freekeen.com, also a great place to get some of the latest news, including a uh, Bitcoin vending machine now located right here in our very own Keen area. See ya. Have you? What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com.
This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Lil Drums. Every bit as fun as a full-size Nestle drumstick cone and definitely cuter. Visit us at drumstick.com. Vacations are all about family time, but you don't have to leave home to have fun. Take one weekend a month and devote it to family activities. Pull out the board games and puzzles, serve up some treats, or have a picnic. Even without leaving home, you'll feel like you've really had some time away. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash your family today. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Cop Block Radio is up next, live after the news, on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates, online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Wednesday, November 5th, 2014. Gold is trading around $1,171, silver around $16.06, and Bitcoin's trading around $331. Today's precious metal price is brought to you by Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from SovereignMiners.com. Interested in mining Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies? Well, Sovereign Miners has you covered. All purchases come with a free script ISIC miner. Visit SovereignMiners.com to buy your miner today. In the news, Republicans yesterday swept to control of the Senate for the first time in eight years. The GOP will hold control of the Senate that convenes in January after knocking off three incumbent Democratic senators and winning four open seats previously held by Democrats. Republicans did not lose a single contest for a seat the party held going into yesterday's elections. Republicans picked up seats in Arkansas, Colorado, Iowa, Montana, North Carolina, South Dakota, and West Virginia. New Hampshire's Liberty-focused Free State Project had a landslide of electoral victories yesterday. Free Talk Live's Ian Freeman reports from New Hampshire. Free State Project participants have likely won at least 15 New Hampshire House seats, running as both Republicans and Democrats. This according to a list of alleged Free Staters compiled by pro-government group Granite State Progress and their Free State Watch effort. Free Staters report that the hater group's list is incomplete, so the actual number of winners is not known, but there are at minimum 15. That's a new record high for the libertarian migration who has elected more liberty-minded people in New Hampshire in a decade than the Libertarian Party has nationwide in 40 years. I'm Ian Freeman, reporting for the Liberty Beat from Keene in the Shire. Today's edition of the Liberty Beat, brought to you by our newest sponsor, eFoods Direct. Redefining the way you think about storable food. Easy to make and great tasting with a shelf life of over 25 years. To celebrate our new partnership, eFoods Direct is offering Liberty Beat listeners 10% off their purchases. To take advantage of this exciting offer, call 800 620 5520 and mention coupon code LibertyBeat. To learn more or to buy online, 